Who's there, Ruckman there? Sh shaggy head guy. Needs to give me a number. 27. Matthew McInnes. Sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas for all your LPG needs. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61, a sponsor of City Park Radio. Welcome to Utah Stadium here in Launceston. It's round four action of the TSL. This afternoon, two great clubs in Tasmanian football. North Launceston up against Glenorchy. North Launceston, top of the ladder, taking all before them in season 2024. Glenorchy on a bit of a rebuild. Great win a couple of weeks ago over North Hobart. A little bit disappointing last week against Lauderdale. And they'll be looking to bounce back here at Utah Stadium. Welcome to my co-commentators. First of all, Rob Soward. G'day, Rob. G'day, Dave. And uh, hello, listeners. What a wonderful day for football here. Sun shining in Launceston as it always does, if anyone's listening in Hobart. But... Uh, the ground in fantastic shape with what promises to be a different encounter in terms of what both sides will want to get out of this, Dave. Glenorchy certainly will want to find that form that they had and uh, led to that uh, great victory over North Hobart two weeks ago. Yeah, they've got some crucial outs. Um, and you might just want to list those ones since that victory against North Hobart. Yeah, fairly extensive, isn't it? Josh Arnold, Daniel Joseph, Cam Duffy, Luke Nicholson, Daniel Muir. They're massive outs for Glenorchy. So... Uh, Bombers have also got their challenges, Dave, as we talked about uh, before we came on air. Obviously, a lot of Devils players out today as well. So some big changes to their side, but uh, those outs for Glenorchy, particularly coming off. Yeah, beautiful day, as you said. Yep, looking forward to a great game here today. And speaking of uh, great conditions, down on the overlooks, absolute pitch. And Tony Webbs, our boundary reporter today, he's down there right amongst it. I am indeed. Uh, beautiful day. The ground's in great condition. There's a little bit of dew earlier, but that's all gone now. So the uh, skills should be really good today. There's no excuse. There's a very, very light breeze, which won't impact on anything. North Launceston have won the toss and will be kicking to the Launceston end of the ground, or, or south. Uh, speaking of debutants, I'm not sure if you've done that here if you're going to the players, but one of the field umpires, Gregson, I think, is making his senior debut today. Um... In terms of the game itself, uh, Glenorchy looking pretty good in the kick around. However, they do have a few um, crucial players out. I suspect Josh Brown being the co or Josh Arnold being the coach being one of them. Uh, I tend to think that North Launceston should win probably quite comfortably. Thanks, Tony. I have to be our pick as well today here at Utah Stadium. Yes, congratulations to Ryan Gregson, uh, our pilot today, along with Caleb Berkeley and uh, Tom McEntee. And speaking of debuts, we've got quite a few across both sides, Rob. Yeah, we have, Dave. Uh, Tane Thomas, uh, Lachlan Shea and Kalen Matthews all make their debuts today for North Launceston. So I know what a proud moment that would be for their families. And Jacob Finlay uh, excitingly makes his debut for Glenorchy. So I'm sure Jacob's family will be tuning in. I'm sure the City Park Radio from New South Wales, which is where he's from. Absolutely, and uh, we, we saw last week uh, North Lots really got going, didn't they, through that engine room. Uh, their midfield were, were pretty elite last week. They were, Dave, and uh, so much of that attack came from half-back, so I'm sure if Glenorchy had a look at the tape this week, which I know they would have done, they would certainly be uh, trying to do whatever they could to stem that run off half-back because it was elite. It's probably as good as I've seen them play on this ground in the last two or three years. Absolutely, and... Uh of course, Glenorchy, we mentioned that great win against North Hobart. They've got some really uh, good players back this year. Harrison Gunther, their captain, he's going to be the real general across that back line. And, of course, we know that North Launceston have got some exciting forwards. Uh, back in the side today, also Blake Wade, who got an ankle injury against North Hobart. He's a pretty key player in that defence as well. So, yeah, it's going to be tough for Glenorchy. Also to recognise that we've got a 100th game today, uh, Isaac Manson, uh, number 11 for Glenorchy. So we saw him in his early days here. In his early days, he had the, the big flowing blonde locks. Yes. He's, he's chopped them off now. He's uh, matured a little bit. But uh, congratulations, Isaac. He stuck through uh, thick and thin with Glenorchy over the last few seasons. Yeah, he did. And it's terrific. I know, Dave, I again mentioned this off air, but being in Hobart, uh, a little earlier this year, happened to be in the vicinity of KG5 uh, Oval and saw them training and training really, really well and great numbers and it was just terrific. Uh, it's great to see a proud club like Glenorchy 
uh, doing what they can to rebuild. And um, when we talk about proud clubs, it's probably cognizant of to mention and pass on our condolences to the family of Des Peters, known uh, uh, as Diamond around the club, uh, unfortunately passed away in the last couple of days. And uh, uh, Glenorchy had a really lovely tribute on their social media, noting, Dave, 50 years of service in a whole variety of capacity. So our thoughts are with the Peters family and... Uh, we, uh, we wish them well at this very sad time. Thanks, Rob. Yes, uh, it's great to recognise, you know, as time goes by, some of those veterans that have been at clubs for years and years, they pass on, and it's great to recognise their contribution to their clubs. So, uh, just a slight change to the umpires here, it's Adam Hayes, Ryan Gregson and Tom McEntee today. And indeed, uh, Ryan Gregson making his debut. Debutants across all levels, Dave. Umpires and players, so uh, wishing them all a good game. Big no, task today. Yeah. Sorry, Rob. Yeah, big task today for young uh, McGuinness. Matthew McGuinness there. Number 27. He's up against Alex Lee in the middle. Getting underway here. First quarter action from Utah Stadium. City Park Radio 103.7 and 96.5. And there's Oscar Van Dam winning a clearance straight away inside 50. Knocked away from Leary. Chance for Chug. Weaves his way through on the right foot. Out to the left. And it sneaks in for a behind. First score to North Launceston. One behind. You saw that uh, centre clearance straight away, Rob, yeah, from Van Dam. Absolutely. He was uh, electric last week, and he started in the same vein today. So we've got uh, on the wing now, Roberts kicks up the wing, and uh, almost a mark there to Matt Joseph. Rob, I'd like to tell you the commentary just for a second, because we've got a bit of an uh, error here with our, our uh, scoring system, so uh, take it away. No worries at all. Ball taken in the middle of the ground there by Glenorchy. Quick kick back out. They've got, a, they've got an overlap. They move the ball on quickly. Ball taken just outside 50. First inside 50 for the Magpies. But chopped off beautifully across halfback by Fletcher Bennett doing what he does so well. Short kick back towards the middle. Van Dam runs around his opponent. All sorts of loose players here for the Bombers and they're out. That's going to be a little chip kick back towards the middle. Nice mark taken there by Schulzberger. Moves it on quickly. Inside 50. Chopped off well across the defence line by Harrison Gunther, who we talked about before the game. Gunther squares it out. Mark taken there by Cooper Meredith. He goes short to his teammate there on the far side, just inside the field of play. It chips the ball back into the corridor. It's going to be OK. Four or five possessions here to Glenorchy in that back line. They're trying to clear it out. Taken there by Joseph. Room to run. Long kick there. Forward by the Glenorchy player. Boundary line's going to win out there. So just trying to chip around there, the Magpies, trying to find the open player. Always like to uh, to do that in their style of play. And uh, the ball currently sitting about 60 metres out from goal. Glenorchy into attack just in front of the old railway workers' hill. As we said earlier, it's going to be a big battle today for uh, McCann against Lee. He's the dominant ruckman. In this competition, Bombers come away with it. Glenorchy pressure good round the footy. That's exactly what they'll need to do today. They'll need to just have that pressure ramped up right from the get-go. They can't afford to let the Bombers get away at all to any sort of start. We saw last week uh, when they got off the leash what happened against North Hobart. So secondary ball up to almost the same place as before. Lynn... Taken there by McCann. Bombers have got numbers around the footy. Again, we're going to have a third ball up, probably 10 metres around from the other one, just outside the Glenorchy 50. Glenorchy forward line open, although Fletcher Bennett's just sitting back there in the hole waiting for that quick kick. If Glenorchy take it away, they're not going to do. Lots of pressure around the ball early, just can't clear the ball out. This time the Bombers come away with it. It might be taken inside the boundary line. It is. I think that's Bailey Jenkins has taken that there. It's on the wing position. Squares it up back into the middle, but chopped off beautifully by Van Dam. He's had a bounce. Two bounces. He's got an absolute paddock in front of him. Three, four. Goes long inside 50. That's a beautiful kick. It's going to carry. Oh, it sits up. Griffiths! Goal! What a fantastic piece of play there. Harvey Griffiths, ever the opportunist. The ball from Van Dam beautifully struck inside 50. Sat on its end. 
Griffiths gathers it out of midair and kicks a fantastic goal. So he's on the board for the Northern Bombers, Harvey Griffiths. We know him. He's a commentator's dream in those blue boots. So the Bombers are on the board. 1-1-7, Glenorchy yet to score. So worrying signs at the moment for Glenorchy in terms of Oscar Van Dam. He's, he's continued in that rich patch of form from last week. A great article in the local media on him this week and the uh, pre-season he did over with the Casey Demons, Dave. Absolutely. Um, cleared from the centre by Rowbottom back on the side today. Back at the club, in fact, after a bit of an absence inside 50. Yeah, that was a great goal there from Griffiths. Just uh, using his body beautifully against his opponent and uh, just fashioned a little right foot shot on the goal. After a great run there from Oscar Van Dam with all those bounces through the middle of Utah Stadium. So we've got... Uh, a bit of a trouble with our score at the moment. It's a score here is 1-1-7 North Launceston. Glenorchy yet to score. So it's just a little bit wrong in our graphic at the moment. So if we can get it fixed. Here they go now. Quick kick inside 50 by Kobe Phillips out to the right. Good spoil there from Theo Ives. It's knocked out of play. Out of bounds. Boundary throw in against the right behind post. As, as we said, Dave, just before, Glenorchy's got to, got to really do something to try and stem that flow that the Bombers do so well. So you've got nothing to lose. And again, there's no surprises. They would have had a look at the tape and they know how the Bombers play. So uh, all on them to try and stop that at the moment. And uh, they're, they're, they've got some good pressure early on. Deep inside attacking 50 for Glenorchy. Tackle late. Another ball up. Lee with the hit out. Does it pretty well out here towards Bales. Collects the ball. Tackled straight away. Flipped out. Nicholas. Defensive handball. Mitchell. That's uh, Bailey Mitchell. Or Lockie Mitchell, sorry, out of defence. Nice mark taken over there by McInnes. The young Ruckman. As uh, Rob said, a big job today against Alex Lee. Kicks inside 50. They rise. A lot of North Austin defenders there. But uh, Glenorchy get to the ball first. Back to Blowfield. Blowfield from 50 towards the goal square. Outnumbered there are the Pies. They swarm to the north defence. Picked up nicely. Handball over the top. Now, it uh, might be a free kick here, is it, for high contact? Play on. Goal's kicked. So I'll just pick up the player there who's kicked that first goal for Glenorchy. I think it might be Jordan Hayden. We'll get the replay here in a minute. Yeah, that's who I thought it was. He, uh, they all went to him and uh, got the high fives. So it was a free kick there. I thought it was going to go towards Callum Thompson. We've got the stream on our uh, screen here. Umpire paid advantage, I think, Dave. He did. So it's 1 1 7, North Lancaster and Glenorchy. One goal straight, six. So it's got a bit of an error with our scoring system at the moment. So just looking at back here. The kick came into the forward pocket nicely from Blowfield. And uh, in the contest, that spilt there to Callum Thompson. He got a bit of high contact. Handball over the top. And taken there by Jordan Hayden for a goal. So first goal to Gnorky. Lively start from the Pies. One goal straight six to North Launceston, one one seven. McInnes is acquitting himself pretty well in the ruck. He won that tap, and that's gone straight to Van Dam. Bombers have taken it away. They've read that beautifully off his hand. Little chip kick inside 50. Real danger ball here. Great poise there from Glenorchy. As Blowfield clears that one out to the wing position. Sits beautifully there for Tom McCann. Goes back inside. Glenorchy trying to set something up here. It's going to be all right. Comes back here to Nathan Blowfield. Little chip kick. It's inside the boundary line. Nice mark taken there. Moves it on quickly, does Matt Joseph. Inside 50, chopped off by Fletcher Bennett. We'll be saying that a bit today, I think. Bennett by hand out to Nicholas. Nicholas kicks to space. Almost have got numbers here. And they're going to come away with it. Set up beautifully off halfback, back towards the middle. Kick wasn't a real flash one, though. It's going to be okay. Butted up there. Van Dam tackled, tackled, spun. I reckon that's going to be holding the ball. No, the umpire says that's going to be mine. So a little bit lucky there with that tackle. Good pressure from Glenorchy. Something we've noticed early on today. They've certainly been really, really good around the footy, Glenorchy. 
It's a nice tap again there to McCann. He's doing really well against Lee in the ruck. Quick 4A forward there for Glenorchy. Got numbers around the footy. Quick hat kit out of that stoppage. Oh, taken beautifully there in the last line of defence. Looks like Sulzberger. Sorry, it's not. It's uh, Theo Ives. He was very good back there last week. Seeks out Bennett. Bennett by hand quickly. A scratchy old kick back towards the middle of the ground. Coped on cleverly by Griffiths. So though Glenorchy have got the numbers around the ball here. Glenorchy plays everywhere. He could raffle that. Taken beautifully there by Adam Roberts. Roberts goes too short. Umpire says not long enough. Back to Roberts. About four possessions here. Griffiths chops it off. Great pressure, Harvey. So he's going to be okay though. Glenorchy come away with it there. Right. Back to Finlay. Finlay goes a long, dangerous kick back towards the middle. Schulzberger drops what he should have taken. Umpire's found a free kick though. Going to go to Kobe Phillips with the long sleeves. And I think we've uh, just about got our score graphic sorted out. That's where I've been for a little while. So hopefully uh, we'll have that back up and running. The score here is 1-1-7 North Launceston. Glenorchy one goal straight six. So the short kick comes up towards half forward for the Pies. Taken by Cox Goodyear. Swings on the left foot. Up here towards Blowfield though for Glenorchy. So they're doing pretty well here. Across the half back line are uh, the Pies. Spills now there towards uh, for North Launceston. Jack Ahern. Handball over the top to Chug. Chug gets to 50. Long kick here looking for Griffiths. He overcooks it. Bounce just inside the line. And uh, it's over the line. Right beside the left behind post for North Launceston. You'd reckon that uh, the Glenorchy coach, I'm sure at quarter time, will address that switch back through the middle, Dave. That's the second time in about three minutes that that's come unstuck. So it's good that they want to take the game on, but you've got to hit your target. Pies, one goal straight six. Trailing North Launceston, 1-1-7. One, one, Been playing 10 minutes. Front position, Gunther. It's away from Matthews. Can't pick it up. It's uh, trailed over the boundary line. They've certainly been really, really good, as I noted earlier, Dave, while you, were, while you had the spanners and the, uh, <laughs> and the hammer out fixing the scoreboard problem. Um, the pressure around the ball has been really good, and I've been really, really impressed with Tom McCann. Very early doors, I know, but... Uh, He's uh, doing a good job in the ruck against uh, Lee. Did you put a G in that one? It's actually McGann. McGann. Yes. It is McGann. Son of Nick McGann, former Lotterson cricketer up here in the north of the state. As uh, the ball's kicked out of bounds. I have to correct you because you'll be on to me. You'll be texting me. Oh, I don't blame him, and that's my <laughs> old eyes without the glasses. Yes, uh, you need those yeah, reading really glasses. Know, I know. My arms aren't long enough. <laughs> Short kick comes in to Harry Bales. Squares it up to Ives. Cricketer to Tom McGann. Switch over here now towards Bailey Mitchell back in the team. Inside 50. There was some holding going on there. It's going to go North Onsen's way. Jack Ahern will have a chance to kick a goal here for North Onsen. Probably right on the edge of his range. So I can confirm we've got the scoreboard back up and running. 1-1-7 North Onsen. Glorky one straight six. Time's a bit behind, though. We've been playing 12 minutes, but we'll fix it up in the second quarter. Beautiful conditions. Bright sunshine. Over 20 degrees forecast. Not too shabby for April the 20th in Tasmania. Comes Ahern. Left foot. Keeps it low. Beautiful kick by Ahern. Second goal for North Launceston. Jack Ahern. And they stretch their lead out now to seven points. 2-1-13. Glenorchy one straight six. But a, a competitive start to this game, Rob Sowett. Yeah, absolutely. You know, I've been really, really happy with uh, Glenorchy's pressure. You could even see then, Dave, as soon as that, uh, the Bombers got possession of that ball in the middle, their defenders streamed forward to try to fill the space. But unfortunately, a bit careless in their uh, management of the Hearn. He, he's a bit of a forgotten man in that forward line with the weapons that they've got up there. But... Uh, you know, he's a big, a big, tall fellow and presents really well. And as we saw from that kick, kicks beautifully. Big task for young Caelan Matthews straight up. Harrison Gunther, one of the uh, class players in the TSL. Played a fair bit with the North Melbourne VFL team a couple of years ago. It's been interstate for a while. Back in the uh, black and white of Glenorchy. And the skipper is Bo Nash with a free kick with the green boots from the middle. The lead up player was Jacob Kerr. Couldn't take it. Taken by Sulzberger, he's tackled. 
And he can't escape. Ball up. 60 out from North Launceston's goal. Keep you up to date with all the uh, games going on this afternoon in the AFL and the TSL. Whitford lays a tackle. Bales is in there. They dive on the ball. Emerging Zay Vent. Over to Nash. Nice handball to Bales. He's under pressure. Gets it back to Nicholas who fumbles. Gets it further back to Nash once again. Third involvement in recent times. Nice little shimmy there from Simpson. Gets it to Bales. And that dangerous left foot. Two kicks out from goal to the pocket. Kaylin Matthews stumped away there by Gunther. Back to Gunther. He picks it up. Shrugs a tackle. Gets the handball away here towards Blowfield. He can't pick it up. And I think it's going to be a whistle on play here in a moment. You can see again Glenorchy are, uh, are really doing what they can to chop the space out here. They're dropping guys back. So full credit to them. You've got to do something when you come here as an underdog. Yep. You've got to do something. Kalen Matthews wins the tap. Back to Blowfield. Kick under pressure. Close to the boundary line. Van Dam handballs over the top. Sulzberger on the boundary line. Gets it to Griffiths. Swings for goal for number two. Griffiths falls in the lap though in the goal square of Blake Wake for Glenorchy. Clears it quickly. Finds Adam Roberts. Another one returning to the Magpies' nest. Goes back to Blake Wake. Dangerous. Manages to take it inside the goal square once again. This is where North Thompson are tough, Rob, aren't they? They don't let it out easily from their defensive 50, or their attacking 50. No. Nice pass, though. Yeah. And it uh, ends up with Mark Tugnorki there to row bottom. He goes short and finds Jordan Hayden, the goal kicker. Another one returning to Glenorchy. They've picked up some really handy players, ex-players. Jordan Hayden, of course, uh, played for Queensland last year against Tasmania. In defensive goal square is Harrison Gunther. He dashes away. Has a target up here. That's a nice mark taken by Jade Clark. Promising youngster for Glorky. Jade Clark leading up here is McKinnis, who takes a nice mark. Thinks about the handball. Wisely doesn't. Short kick here looking for Cox. But uh, in the way there is Mitchell. Lockie Mitchell. Goes looking for Simpson, but getting a hand in nicely there was Adam Roberts knocking it out of play. Yeah, it's an interesting passage of play, as you said there, Dave. The North Launceston defence, as we know, is just really tough to crack. And Glenorchy had to work hard to get that out of there. So they would have been disappointed with that McGuinness yeah. great mark, but just that next uh, that next kick was the one that uh, that let him down. Sorry, uh, McGann, I should say. Little kick out of the contest there from Avent. Taken nicely by Simpson, but he's tackled from behind strongly by Shea on debut. Spills now to Kerr. Shea again on the left foot. Spears it towards Matthews, but leading out there is Gunther. He's having an influence in, the, in this back line already, Rob. Is Harrison Gunther. Gets it to Thompson. Tries to get it to Roberts, but overcooks the kick. He's a real general back there, Harrison Gunther. Yeah, he is. I mean, it, uh, whilst the debutante, uh, Kalen Matthews, is playing on him, I'll be trying to take him away from that last line. I'll be trying to pull him up the ground, because at the moment he's calling the shots beautifully back there, isn't he? Bales. Now he's going to have to come back over his mark. At least the kick there towards Cox Goodger. It's 2 1 13 North Thunderson. Glenorchy 1 straight 6. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. Short from Bales to Van Dam. Chip over the top to Nash. Easy one to pick for commentators in those lime green boots. Little chip kick in towards Matthews. Oh, what a mark, is it? No. Not paid. And the debutante there presented nicely and got good elevation, nearly took a good grab. Oh, he did. He did a great job. Had a really nice run at it and was probably unlucky. Just couldn't get the hands on it for the second touch. Cox Goodger, tackled there by Callum Thompson. I was just saying off air earlier, Dave, these young guys for the Bombers debutantes today been training very hard in the gym over summer and being rewarded for their efforts. Absolutely. We could get a defence here, looking for Jesse Cox. Leary's there, now Van Dam, 40 out, centres it. Griffiths has two against him. Tries to tap to himself. Blake Wade did pretty well, got the front position and uh, gets himself a free kick. Crafty plate there by uh, Blake Wade. Short kick finds Josh Meredith, uh, Cooper Meredith, beg your pardon. Meredith goes wide. Kobe Filtz with the ball in the long sleeves. 
He switches play towards Gunther. Now, they've got players on the overlap here on the wing. Gunther gets it to Roberts. He's going to need a friendly bounce. Van Dam's there. Roberts picks it up. Gets the handball away to Cox. Cox kicks inside 50 fairly aimlessly. Oh, it falls nicely here to Roberts again, who followed up his good work. Gets it to Matty Joseph. He's just pushed off his kick at the last moment. And it skews out of bounds on the foot. Yeah, Good movement there from the Pies. Absolutely, Doug. Beautiful passage of play. But I'm just wondering, Fletcher Bennett is always that spare man. So I'm just wondering why they're not aware of that. If we are, they should be. Bales now. Over the top with the handball. Ends up with Cox Kudja. Now to Griffiths, who's drifted up the field. Looking for a Gannis. Who marks? Big Tony Aganis. 30 out. 45 degree angle. Chance for North Austin's third goal. And that's a great example, Dave, of what I said. I'm going to give us a pat on the back here. They've taken Gunther away from goals, haven't they? Gunther was almost up on the 50 there. And look what happened. Aganis ran into that space. He impressed me last week, Dave. He, he had did. a really, really good game, didn't he? Took uh, four grabs in about 10 minutes there at one stage in the third quarter. Shot on goal. Coming up. A little sideways shuffle. Close to the man on the mark. And off to the left, that's one area I think he might just have to work on, Rob. We saw him miss a couple last week. He missed a couple of absolute sitters, didn't yep. he? And uh, that was a, a diff, more difficult shot. But you could see the relief there on uh, Gunther's face. <laughs> he uh, Just being pulled away from those goals. I like him close to goals where he directs the traffic. Brady Simpson with the short kick. Glenorchy in the back pocket. Started the game pretty well. Oh, that's a lovely mark, Blake Waite. He's having a great first quarter. But uh, he's infringed, says the umpire. It's going to come back to Tony Aganis. It's unlucky there. Yeah. I, didn't, I didn't see what happened. He was sort of like a chess mark in a pack, wasn't it? Yes, unless uh, a third player took Aganis out of the contest. I didn't see that one. But anyway, it's Bales now. Centre and kick. Taken by Sulzberger. It was a booming kick. Goes low with the pass. Looking for Matthews. Takes the mark on his chest. Gee, that was a good kick from Salisburger. There was no margin for error there between the two Glenorchy defenders, and he hit the youngster Matthews on the chest. Yeah, beautiful pass. He's actually put that ball that the only person on the field that could get it was Matthews. So great work there and execution, and a lovely mark taken by the young player in Matthews. So he's right on the boundary line. Tough shot for your first goal in TSL footy. He's about 20, 25 out. Left-hand side kicking to the town end of Utah Stadium. Kaylin Matthews sets it out to the right and uh, won't score on this occasion. So a couple of opportunities there for the Northern Bombers. 22 minutes gone in the first quarter. They lead 14 to 6. Short kick comes out there from Kobe Phillips to Gunther. Gunther will go back to Phillips. Where the uh, Bombers make it tough to escape. Defensive 50. Taken there by Jack Miles. Ex-GYC student. Kicking up nice here with Callum Thompson. Thompson goes short. Up the wing. Good possession footy. Here from the Magpies. Roberts with a little kick to the leading McInnes. It's been pretty impressive so far. All nice grabs, including that one. They picked that defence apart pretty well there, but five, it took five disposals inside 50 to get out of the 50. McKinnis inside 50, Joseph there, but strong hands in front, Theo Ives. Just too much height and strength there for the uh, Matty Joseph. He kicked uh, five in the first round. Oh, a nice little interception there. Well judged by Isaac Manson, the 100 gamer. Picked he, his pocket, didn't he? He did. He just read that little pass inside 50. That was meant for Blade Sulzberger. And it's got in the way. And now they've got a chance for their second goal. Look at Orky Magpies. Yeah, I don't know much about the uh, the length in this guy's leg, but he was looking to give it off, so uh, we'll see. There's not much breeze today to speak of. See if he's got it in him. Isaac Manson gets good connection. He's kicked a goal, Isaac Manson, in his 100th game for Glenorchy. And that's their second. Two goals straight, 12. North Thompson 2 2 14. And Dave Grew, we haven't, uh, with all the drama here with the scoring system, we haven't got any stats yet. Give us some. Yeah, okay. Your clearances are even, six apiece so far. Um, inside 50s, North Thompson just ahead there, 10 uh, to Glenorchy, six. 
and intercept marks. Uh, if you were saying in the back line here for Glenorchy, if you're taking this, so what, seven intercept marks to North Launceston's four. Okay. So, uh, interesting start. Hit out's been dominated by North Launceston, of course, uh, groups. Yeah. yeah. 14 to 5 there. Yeah, so six inside 50s for two goals. That's not a bad conversion rate. No, absolutely. And, uh, you know, the Bombers' defence would be a bit disappointed with that one, but it was beautifully read by Manson. I mean, he just stuck that mid out, didn't he? And it stuck. So, uh, well, well, well rewarded for his efforts. In the middle again. Stolen away nicely there for Glenorchy by Jacob Finlay, the debutante. Kicks wide, but aimlessly. And will just spill out of bounds. It's sort of like uh, with that New South Wales background, it was like he was kicking for two, looking for, yeah, four, kicking for look, touch. Looking for the 40 20 day. Uh, he's kicked the space. Yeah, you got the lingo a bit better than me. <laughs> Is that league or union, the 40 20? League. League, right. Boundary throw in McInnes and Lee. Lee dominating the tap out to get another one towards Cox Goodju. Can't take it with him. McInnes, the big ruckman, tries to take it himself. And he might have got a bit of high contact. That's what the umpire says. So he's looking inside. He'll be invited to play on. Now he's got to. Gets it to Finlay. They go inside 50 again. Long kick. Can anyone take a grab? Bales with a sweeping handball looking for Bennett. He'll be under pressure. Release it nicely to Sulzberger. He handballs to Lee under pressure. He might get pinged for a throw here. He will. So Brady Rowbottom. He kicks deep inside 50. But it's all North Launceston with Lockie Mitchell. Now, was there shepherding in the in the uh, marking contest, Dave, uh, Rob Soward? Did you see that one? Yeah, absolutely. He's uh, he's done exactly that. And it's uh, reversed. And it's going to be Glenorchy shooting on goal from uh, almost point-blank range, Dave. And that man is Josh Meredith. And this will put Glenorchy in front. Deep in the first quarter. Meredith. Oh, he's missed oh. that crucial opportunity. Put the wow commentator's wee. curse on him too. Gee whiz, you can't miss from there. 2-1-13 to 2-2-14. As Bennett gets a releasing kick. And there's the siren for quarter time. Entertaining first quarter. Tight contest. North Launceston 2-2-14. Lee Glenorchy 2-1-13. As uh, the players are pretty weary in the warm conditions, go to the quarter time huddles. Just uh, before Rob gives you the goal kicks, I should have mentioned the D League score earlier today. It was Glenorchy 13 16 94, defeated North Launceston 7 9 51. So a 43 point win there to the Pies. Rob, two goals apiece. Who got them? For North Launceston, uh, Harvey Griffiths was channeling his best Lionel Messi, uh, Dave, yeah. with that beautiful. Uh, Gathering a quick shot out of the air. So uh, Harvey Griffiths and Jack Ahern with a beautiful uh, goal, uh, long-range goal. They're the two North Launceston goal kickers for Glenorchy, Jordan Hayden and Isaac Manson. Uh, although they probably left one out there in the last uh, few seconds of that quarter. But uh, a great start from both sides. I know that, um, you know, channeling the Glenorchy coach, he would be delighted with uh, the effort of Glenorchy so far. Adrian Smith... Probably not as delighted with uh, some of the mistakes they've made, particularly coming off last week. The challenge for Glenorchy, Dave, will be doing this for another three quarters. Dave Gruber with the team stats. Hit outs, North Launceston's way, 15 to 6 that quarter. Clearances, Glenorchy 7, North Launceston 6. Uh, inside 50s, pretty even. North Launceston 10, Glenorchy had 8. Marks inside 52 to North Launceston and 1 to the Magpies. Intercept marks, 5 for North Launceston, 7 for Glenorchy. And free kicks seven apiece. Thanks, Dave Gruber. Just looking at those stats, uh, you know, fairly even across the board groups. Obviously, uh, those hit outs is, is uh, Lee's dominating so far. Yeah, yeah, he's always on top there, and, and Aganis too helping out. Quarter time here at Utah Stadium. It's North Launceston 2 2 14, Glenorchy 2 1 13. Back in just a moment. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. Whether you're moving in or you're settled in, Make the switch online today. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Don't lose out. Visit the website, choose your new deal and sign up today. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. 
Elgas. Local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Be a lifesaver. Donate blood or plasma at Australian Red Cross Lifeblood. Hello, I'm Dylan Visser from Lifeblood Launceston. With a donation needed every 18 seconds across the country, you could make a real difference to someone's life. You can donate blood or you can donate plasma. It's used for 18 different life-saving treatments. Even Aussie world swimming champ Michael Klim relies on plasma donations. Become a donor today. It's easy to do. Contact our friendly team at Lifeblood or drop in at 54 Patterson Street today. Part of your community, City Park Radio. Do you or a loved one need support to live independently at home? Don't miss Community Care Tasmania's Sharing the Care, Empowering Your Independence Expo. 10 till 3, Tuesday, May 7 at the Punchbowl Christian Centre in Launceston. Find out about products and services to help you or your loved one live at home safely and get help in navigating your aged care and NDIS options. For more on Community Care Tasmania's Sharing the Care, Empowering Your Independence Expo, visit cct.org.au. A sponsor of City Park Radio. This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the locals with knowledge. Elgas, call 13 11 61. A sponsor of City Park Radio. One point lead to the Bombers at quarter time. Rob Sowett, have you seen it? Oh, look, it's been a, a really interesting battle. I mean, as I said uh, a couple of times, the Glenorchy effort around the ball has been fantastic. Their pressure. They've picked their way through that excellent Bomber defence in terms of moving the ball out. The Bombers have had their chances, as we've said, uh, you know, with those inside 50s. But there just hasn't been that little bit of polish there today that the Bombers had last week. And they certainly haven't been able, Dave, to initiate as many attacks off half-back. Last week, it was a procession, wasn't it? It was like link-up handball, link-up handball, and away they went. Glenork has limited them so far to that. So I'm sure they'll be, uh, that'll be addressed at quarter time in Adrian Smith's address. I was watching the body language of the Bombers players and you can sense there's a little bit of frustration there. It's not just going how they want it to at the moment. But the challenge for Glenork, Dave, will be to maintain that pressure for another 75 minutes, which is easier said than done. Rob, battle of the back lines, isn't it? Like three marks inside 50 between the two teams and only four scoring shots to three. So both half back lines, it's been played a lot between the arcs. Yeah, it is. And uh, again, the Bombers, you know, that do that so well, they funnel that ball inside, they don't let it out. Uh, they certainly will want to, uh, to turn that defence into attack. So, uh, yeah, all to do. Uh, but, but, you know, again, if you were sitting here as a football watcher, uh, you would be pretty impressed with what you saw in that first quarter. Van Dam and Salisbury particularly and Bales across half-back uh, have been the prime movers. Yeah, they have. You know, they've continued their great form from last week. But uh, that ability to link up, they're winning plenty of footy, but that ability to link up in the, inside that forward, forward line hasn't been uh, what it was. Gunther, we talked about how important he is back there, Dave, for Glenorchy. He's done a great job uh, so far marshalling the, the troops. And as we said, the Bombers will want to pull him away from that goal and open things up. And when they did that, they were rewarded with a mark and a shot on goal. Yeah, like the work at Gunther. Also, Blake Waite back there has been pretty good. Um, Kobe Phillips is another one that's been prominent. So getting a few players are getting their hands on the ball. And a couple of times they have been able to work it out of their defensive 50, and that's we saw North Hobart last week really struggle with that. Yeah, they did. They've done that really, really well. The other Glenorchy guy that's impressed me, uh, is McGann. I mean, I guess if you want to learn your craft as a young ruckman, we know that tools do take a little bit longer in their development. I mean, what better way to do it than uh, against, uh, you know, some of the better players in the league? McGuinness, we've mentioned him as well. You know, uh, again, like, it's great to see them get games into these young guys against arguably some of the best players in the state. Tony Webb was down there at the Glenorchy Huddle. He kept them quite a while, while there, Tony. And uh, what did their coach have to say? He's very encouraging. Um, he's really pleased with that. He's really pleased with the effort they're putting on there, trying to guard the, uh, the space. He's a little bit critical, though, in a couple of areas. One was the shallow entries. Uh, they feel that they give North a good look at the ball, and they're really aware that North do uh, transition the ball really, really well. So they are aware of what Rob was saying earlier in the call. Wants people to look inside, but if they can't see something there, even if you just kick it into space and try and block it up, up there, that's the way to go. Uh, a bit worried about some people not quite protecting the right space and telling his players to be a bit more critical of each other out there. Uh, and he's a little bit critical of the last kick into attack sometimes. He's just gone straight to North Defender, which we've seen a couple of times with um, Fletcher Bennett a couple of times. But overall, really pleased. Uh, just said, beware, this is, a, this is a class side. Got to keep the pressure on them. 
Thanks, Tony. So uh, we're back underway, and Young McInnes gets it out of the middle. It was taken here by Bailey Mitchell. His short kick ends up with Nash, the boy from the northwest coast. Ex Tassie Devil player. Tassie Devils in action tomorrow against uh, Greater Western Sydney, the boys and the girls. Van Dam, four options across half back. He's got Fletcher Bennett there with a lot of space. Man on for him is Simpson, running as Tane Thomas. Doesn't get the footy though. Uh, Simpson kicks inside 50, lowers the eyes. And he's found a target up there. And that's Ahern, who's been uh, probably the, the best forward option so far for the Bombers. He goes short, looking for Cox Goodger. Has to take it on the bounce, shrugs a tackle, handballs to space. They try to work it out, the Glenorchy defence. Little kick out there from Jade Clark, who took a nice mark in the first quarter. He's cleared defence of 50. Roberts lays a tackle, back to Ahern, it's out of bounds. Yeah, the Glenorchy defence are, are working pretty well, and you'll notice, Dave, when they're giving up possessions, it just tends to be in around that arc, doesn't it? There's certainly nothing closer to goal. So the boundary umpire right in front of the scoreboard. The railway wing, general admission area. If you uh, can picture watching the AFL broadcast where everyone stands, there's a few refreshments over on that side of the ground. Tackle laid by Jordan Hayden on his North Launceston opponent. It'll be another ball up by Tom McEntee. We'll raise the ball aloft here. Up it goes again. McKinnis and Lee. Lee wins comfortably. Gets the call from Kerr. Kerr hands it off to Cox Goodyear. 60 out. Short kick to Leary, who's been quiet. Clark couldn't take the mark for Glenorchy. Now he's laid upon. Ball up. So that's a matchup, which I suspect it is. Number 19, Jay Clark. He's done a pretty good job on Leary so far. Yeah, he has. Leary, Leary, but Leary's one of those guys, isn't he? He can just pop up. Yep, doesn't get a lot of possessions. But, gee, when he gets them. Oh, and there's the Cox Good. You know, he didn't get the high tackle that time. He usually gets those. Out to Lee. Kicks to a contest in the pocket. And that's a nice mark taken there again by Ahern. I reckon that's his third mark inside 50. Yeah, Cox Good, you uh, had to go back and pick his head up, Dave, after that yes. tackle. Yes. He usually gets those. I'm he sure. does. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, Hearn's looking dangerous, isn't he, inside 50 for... Uh, it looks like there's a bit of a size mismatch on his opponent too. So uh, he's been the good, uh, the dominant forward so far, hasn't he, for uh, the Bombers? And he's got this shot about 30 out. Slightly sharper than 45-degree angle. Kicked to the Invermay Park end. No breeze to speak of. A Hearn has kicked a goal for North Launceston. One they really needed as the pies are really starting to come at them. And 3 2 20 to 2 1 13. First goal of the third quarter, Rob Sowart. Yeah, it's about getting reward for effort, and uh, they certainly got that there, the Bombers. I mean, I contrast that with the last uh, minute or two of that first quarter where Glenorchy got reward for effort, uh, blocked out of a contest, missed the shot on goal that you couldn't miss. Ahern, in that instance, took a really, really good mark, and Julie saluted for his second of the game. And Rob, the, the Bombers set up so nicely that that panic kick that we sometimes see to just clear the area. Nine times out of ten doesn't work out because they're just well set up. We saw that on that occasion. Pies yeah. just tried to get it out of there, but uh, just came straight back. It does. Their system stands up really well, both attacking and defensive, and we saw the reward for that there. Lee with the tap. No, McInnes does pretty well. Gets the clearance. Does he get his hand to the handball? And Pye says yes. Nash mops up for North Launceston to Avent. Now to Bales, whose kick's not great. Straight into the lap there, Brady Simpson. They clear the ball now through Callum Thompson to the wing. Roberts and Cox Goodger. Roberts this way, that away on the left foot. It's going to fall well short of his target in Manson. Taken easy by Bennett. Bennett's kicked to Van Dam. Here they go, North Launceston. Van Dam inside 50 has a target there. I'm pretty sure that's Declan Chug. 40 metres out. 45 degree angle. It's easy for us up here in the commentary box to say this, but um, you wonder why Van Dam and Bennett don't have opponents like it. So much of the attack starts with both of them. So you just got to man them up. Simple as that. Yeah, it's just so damaging through the middle of this beautiful stadium. Declan Chug. Moved to the forward line this year. That one looks like it's moved off to the right. It has. Umpire signals one behind. Some, some danger signs, though, Dave, in the early stages. We're seeing that, uh, that half-back line run, aren't we? That we... Uh, we saw last week so damagingly for the Bombers. 
Um, they haven't really been able to generate that yet, but in the first five minutes or so, the, uh, the, the, the warning signs are there. Blake Waite is back to the goal square to Gunther. She nearly went through. Gunther thinks about the handball. That's to pinpoint a teammate here in row bottom. It just goes over his head. He might run onto it. There's a teammate there with him out, though. Gets tackled from the side. But uh, does get the clear and kick here to Jacob Finlay on debut. Finlay towards Joseph. He's got three opponents. They knock it away from him. Going in hard is McGann. It's going to be bottled up now. No escape there for Matthew Joseph. And that's where I think you know, football is a game between your ears, isn't it? I mean, if, if uh, Glenorchy are going to have a couple of spares at one end of the ground, of course the Bombers are going to have a couple at the other. They've had it, the out number a few times in attack. There is uh, Avent now with the bounce. Gets to 60 out. Sideways handball to Kerr. Doesn't get a friendly bounce. Wheels back onto it. Gets free. Over the top to Cox Goodger. He's confronted. Good pressure from the Pies. The ball emerges. Little handball out there from Finlay. He's been pretty good in his first game. It ends up now with the Bombers. Kerr clears the path there for Avent. Tries to barrel his way through. Dispossessed is Leary. Incorrect disposal. Advantage paid now as the Pies come away. Now they've got a big chance here. They've got a bit of a numerical advantage if they can go quickly. Kick over the top. Roberts gets it back here to Manson. Manson plays on. Gets to 60 out. Goes a long kick to the goal square. Isaac Manson, this might carry the contest. Joseph got his hand to it. Almost took a good mark. Out of bounds. I reckon if Joseph had let that go through, Rob, that would have been a goal. Yeah, that's what I was thinking he was going to do. But I guess that's from here. Yeah, yeah. that temptation's there, isn't it? You know, it's yeah. just near the line. Yeah, you're not really exactly sure. But, uh, gee, that was a nice long kick from Isaac Manson. Yeah, he's been good early. Kicked that nice goal. And, uh, yeah, dangerous for Glenorchy. 21 plays 13. Deep in Glenorchy's attack. Lee wins a tap comfortably against Manson. They've got the runners through Nicholas. Handballs to Sulzberger. Over the top here looking for Chug who drops the chest mark. That he really should have taken. That's out of bounds. Yeah, it's good pressure there from Glenorchy. I mean, it's again, easy to say from up here, but there shouldn't be skill errors on a day like today. The ground's in magnificent shape. It's a dry day. But uh, good pressure there from uh, the Glenorchy opponent on yeah. uh, Chug made him drop what he should have taken. Yeah, and Jack Miles, who's got the the job there on Chug at the moment. Doing a good job. Chug got off the leash last week, didn't he? Kick three very good goals and looked dangerous every time he got the ball in his hand. Lee the tap. Rowbottom fumbled off the ground. They've got a couple of numbers here. Rowbottom again. Kicks inside 50. Leading out, though, for North Launceston is Theo Ives, who takes a defensive mark. Risky kick, won't come off. Mark taken, I think that's row bottom again. Wait till he emerges. It is Ro Brody row bottom. He's returned to the Pies, one of those uh, players that have come back as the Pies climb the ladder once more, hopefully, for them. And he's got a chance here to get them much closer, keep them within a goal. Tough shot, long way out. Sulzberger on the marks, 48 out. Brady Rowbottom kicks towards goal. I think it's got the distance, not quite. Still in play, knocked through for a behind. Yeah, Seeing the ball carry a long way to that end of the ground, aren't yeah, we? Yeah, we are. I mean, there's no wind to speak of, no. so uh, deceptive, Dave. One behind, 21 plays 14, short from Nicholas to Bennett, who marks up against Bailey Jenkins. Bennett goes short back to Nicholas. Nicholas returns the ball back to the goal square. To Bennett. So racking up the fantasy points, the North Lonson defenders. Man here all by himself is Lockie Mitchell. He gets it on the bounce. Amble over the top is short. Kerr spins out, then he's tackled nicely from behind there by Kobe Phillips. And he'll be penalised. Play on now. Short kick comes in there from Jordan Hayden. McGann fumbles, picks it up. Handball sideways to Miles. Miles gets it back to Hayden. Kick for goal here by Jacob Finlay. Can't kick his first goal on TSL foot. It falls short. Oh, Nicholas has tackled. He's in trouble. He might be penalised here. Play on, says the umpire. Funny old shot there from Isaac Manson. Falls out of play. Mitchell Nicholas. He had it a while, groups. He did, yep. 
been a good couple of minutes here for Glenorchy, Dave, hasn't it? The pressure and uh, those in repeat inside 50s, but they just need to capitalise on the scoreboard. Boundary thrown, five metres around from the left behind post at the city end of the ground. Oh, Lee, you call that a tap, Grooves? What have you done with that one? I'll let that one go let through. Let that one go time. through. <laughs> kick out of mid-air from the ruck contest. And it's going to be a free kick. It's going to come back to Bo Nash for North Launceston. Nash has a leading player, but ends up with Avent over the back of the contest. He takes the mark. That's to play on. Goes backwards. Finds the ever-reliable Fletcher Bennett. He has a man on here in Tane Thomas. He gets his first mark. And from my memory, Rob, I did have a couple minutes off the mic, but I think that might be his first possession in TSL footy. It is, yes. He goes sideways and does it nicely to Nicholas. Good first environment from the, uh, the youngster from Prospect High School. It was. You had spanners and tools flying around here everywhere, Dave. Yeah. You still have a great memory. Well Absolutely. done. Absolutely. Up the wing. Shrugging a tackle as a hern. This way, that away. Back to Van Dam with space. Over the top to Sulzberger. Low kick inside 50, falls straight in the lap of Harrison Gunther. Sideways kick here to Kobe Phillips. It's been pretty good. Wait, Phillips, Gunther, Miles. Been strong back line so far for Glenorchy. Although on this occasion, he lets me down. We're kicking it out of bounds on the full. With great pressure there from Harvey Griffiths on the mark. I mean, yep. We're going to give him some credit for that because uh, it was that pressure that he put on the kicker that led to that going out of bounds. Bennett to Sulzberger. As a leading target, Chug over his head. Chance here for a gainus. Up against Gunther. It's a funny old handball all the way back to Avent. Tries to fashion a shot. Back to Jacob Kerr. Doesn't kick many goals, Jacob Kerr. But uh, he's offline on this occasion. One behind. 3 4 22. 2 2 14. Just a one goal kicked in this quarter, Rob. Yeah, it's been uh, been a real battle of the back line still, although you're gained. Glenorchy have had a few chances, but uh, the Bombers' back line holding firm. Short kick out. Up the wing from Kobe Phillips. Knocked out of play. It's a real coach's conundrum at the moment in terms of what uh, both coaches can try and do to try and open this up. You, it's uh, back line's dominant at the moment. I mean, only five goals kicked and we've played a quarter and a half of footy. McKinnis in the ruck contest with Lee. Lee flips over the back beautifully to Avent. That's in the coaching manual, that one. Beautiful ruck work. Up forward. Garnis nearly takes the mark. And now we're going to whistle on play. It's going to go Glenorchy's way as Griffiths picked up the ball. It's going to come back to that man, Blake Waite. He's been good back there. Absolutely. Got an ankle injury against North Hobart. Mr. Week. Back in the side today. Miles. Short kick to Roberts. His kick looks for Callum Thompson. Finds him. Half back. Up here towards half forward, row bottom front position. Over the back, falls to Ives. Handballs to Thomas. Little classy look away handball to Bennett. Ends up with Nicholas all by hand. Sweeping kick here, looking for the big ruckman in Lee. Alex Lee marks it half back. Goes short. Nicely to Bales. Bales leans back in a kick. Straight to Sulzberger. Gee, those two combine a lot here for North Launceston. Sulzberger, lace out kick here towards Declan Chug, who takes the mark. Great delivery, Blade Sulzberger. The skills were pretty elite for North Launceston on that occasion, Rob. Yeah, they were, Dave. And uh, again, you contrasted with when Glenorchy went back through the middle in that first quarter. They turned the ball over. In that instance, the Bombers go back through the middle and they've got a shot on goal. But uh, he's kicked that ball. The only person that could mark it was the target. You know, so uh, great play. Declan Chug, inside 50, launches to the Invermay Park end. He's right offline this time. Missed a couple of opportunities at Declan Chug. His radar's not on today. Out of bounds on the full. 22 plays, 14. A couple of stats groups for us. Oh, hit outs, yeah, North Launceston, eight to uh, none to Glenorchy so far this quarter. So Lee continues on his merry way. Clearances, five to North Launceston, two for Glenorchy, and inside 50s. North Launceston have eight. Glenorchy have added in there three times. Okay, eight to three. They're hanging in there. All I need to do at the moment. So they have ball at half back to Glenorchy. Long kick up the wing. Straight in the lap there. Jacob Kerr takes an overhead mark. Switches play. They're lining up in the middle for North Launceston. Lee takes it to Bales, who's under pressure though. 
Gets it back to Lee. Lumbers after it. Can't pick up the ball, the big fella. Back to Kerr once again. So Glenorchy have done pretty well here. It's going to be a stoppage. Yeah, they have. They've cut off the middle there really well in that instance. The Bombers are showing that they're quite happy to shift it back through there, but they held them up on that occasion. Out now to Jordan Hayden. Kicks up towards Manson at half 40. Takes a strong mark. He's got no one inside 50. So they'll have to wait. He waits and he delivers. He finds Hayden once again. Jordan Hayden, who kicked the Norky's first goal of the game. The man on the marks, 48 out. It's Blade Sulzberger. And uh, the 2016 Premiership player for the Pies, Jordan Hayden, spent some time in Queensland, of course. So a big recruit this year for the Pies. I love this goal at this point in the game. Crosses 50, Jordan Hayden. Not a bad kick. It's a behind. Just off to the left. 2-3-15, Glenorchy. North Launceston, 3-4-22. Having a big, tall target would be, uh, be pretty handy for them there at the moment. They're, they're taking their shots almost from 50, aren't they? Short kick. Ends up with Salisbury's amount of possession so far in this game. Short to Nash. Nash is the call. Out of Kerr. has been pretty good so far. Jacob Kerr. Now to Bailey Mitchell. Oh, sorry, Lockie Mitchell. He goes wide. Great kick, Lockie Mitchell. Finds Sam Simpson. Settles things down. Goes the 45 kick here. Looking for Cox Goodger. He just wrestles his opponent. Males out of the way. Takes the chest mark. Now he kicks inside 50. Griffiths with the lead. Knocked away, though. Well by the Glenorchy defence. Ends up now with Blake Waite. Kick out here looking for Kobe Phillips. He's tackled straight away by Lee. No prior, says the umpire. 17 minutes gone. Just one goal kicked in this third quarter. Five goals kicked overall. Lee with the tap. Won a lot today. Now to Cox Goodger. Weaves his way through traffic. Gets to 50 out. Kicks towards the goal square. Cox Goodger. It's just offline. One behind. 3-5, 23. Letting Glenorchy 2-3, 15. You're listening to City Park Radio, 103.7 and 96.5. Give and go, Gunther and Waite. Gunther just does the, don't argue with a Gannis. And he kicks to the wing. Front position, Phillips. Big fly from Ahern. Ball comes back and it's uh, cleared out here towards Rowbottom from Blowfield. Rowbottom takes the ball. Has a little bit of time. Kicks over the top, finds Jesse Cox. Cox to Whitford, with Whitford on 50, to the goal square, one-on-one -on -one contest. Nearly a mark there to Manson. He's back on the play there, he shoves his opponent in the side. That's Lockie Mitchell. Manson almost looked like he was a bit unsighted, whether he lost that in the sun, Dave. Yep. It sort of uh, got big on him all of a sudden. I mean, I, I thought he was going to mark that. Good footy there from the Pies, right from the, the back line. Almost a goal-scoring opportunity. Van Dam and Manson, unlikely ruck con uh, combatants there. Comes out now to Bales, to Sulzberger. Amble off to Nicholas. Fancy footwork, gets himself clear. Waits on the possession. Coughs it up, though. Chance here for Glenorchy through Roberts. He's tackled to a standstill. Uncharacteristic turnovers, Rob, from the uh, Northern Bombers today. Yeah, they're certainly not as crisp and clean as last week. I mean, last week it was perfection, yeah, by and large, but uh, just not hitting those targets as they'd want today. Collingwood and Port underway. We'll get Rob on the case of that one in a moment. Now, we've got a shepherding free kick in the ruck, though. That's McInnes. He's too far out to score. Hands the ball off. Low kick inside 50. A lot of Northern Bombers there. Over the back, though. They drop the easy to Marks. Taken by Mitchell. Tries to get it to Bales, who's happy to see it out of bounds. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge. Phone 13 11 61. Rob. Just, uh, just letting, getting the, the, letting the technology work okay, we'll It's get... 8 to 1, Dave. Uh, the, I could say the Magpies are up. Okay. Port Adelaide, 8 Absolutely. to 1. The uh, TSL game at Bell Reeve is underway too. We'll get to that in a moment. Well, then Manson. Wins the ruck contest, kicks it towards goal, but last line of defence, Theo Ives takes the mark. Manson's been a live wire up forward. Ives spots up Nicholas, lovely kick. 
Mitch Nicholas at half back. Has to find a way out. Short to Bales. He takes the mark up against Manson. So they do the switch now to Bennett in the defensive goal square. He takes a bounce, cruises off, gets long up the wing as a target. Nicely taken there by Chug. Heavily disguised to Sam Simpson. Takes the mark at half back. And balls it off. Over the top now towards Van Dam, who's got the ball. Short little kick to Cotts Goodger. Attacking side of the wing. Kicks it inside 50. Van Dam couldn't take the mark. Off hands Miles, sees it out of bounds. I think if anyone had said to us before the game, Dave, with uh, five minutes to go till half time, that uh, North Lawn system would have three goals and Glenorchy would have two. Yep. I think they'd, uh, they'd be wondering what we were on. But, uh, it's been a real battle of the defences so far, hasn't it? Absolutely. Catching up with Damien Gill, the head of AFL Tasmania, at half time. Taken there by Gunther, out of the ruck contest. Hamble's going to end up with Roe Bottom, but he can't pick it up. Matthews is there, fighting for the ball. Roe Bottom again. Gets the boundary line, Sulzberger. Gets it to Ahern, swings towards goal. Ahern. It's marked there by Wait. Just inside the line, in between the goal and behind post. Is he going to try and finesse a little kick here, or is he going to go longer? He's invited now to play on. Waits on it. Handball over the top, row bottom. Back to Wait. This might work out all right. A lot of risk involved. He takes the bounce, Blake Wait. He's going to back himself. Does he run too, too far? far. He does. Yes. <laughs> we just had that feeling, didn't we? It's yeah. just that uh, step too far. <laughs> I can hear the Benny Hill music in the background there, Dave. That last cut, that last step brought him undone. It's a pity because it was such a brave manoeuvre to get. You know, he took the mark between the behind and goalpost, and now the free kick's outside 50. Bo Nash kicks it inside 50. Matthews! Kalen Matthews! That's an impressive mark, young man. 30 metres out directly in front. He had a tough shot in the first quarter from the boundary line, but this one's much more straightforward. It's a real coach killer. You look at how hard Glenorchy worked to get out of their um, defensive 50, and now the Bombers have got a shot on goal in the shadows of half time. Confident approach to that, Mark Rob. Yeah. Hands right. out in front. Let's see if he can convert. Kalen Matthews on debut for North Launceston. Boy from St. Patrick's College. Matthews keeps it low, too low. And it's marked in defensive goal square. A little bit of nerves in that kick, I think. You wouldn't mind that again. Short kick comes out. Risky. Over the back, it's Blowfield. Back to Miles. Oh, gee, that's another risky kick. It's all come off, though. And Harrison Gunther has taken in the back pocket. They'll want to go in Glenorchy, I reckon, with this margin the same, Dave. They will not want to cop up, cough up a goal here right on half time. Well, it's uh, 23 minutes gone, but you wouldn't say there's much play to go with just one goal kicked. An early finish here today at this rate. Miles now takes it on the half volley. Oh, his handball looking for Gunther, who has to lay tackle now. And he caught oh. his opponent high. It was one of those marginal ones. But uh, we saw it from here. Yeah, it was high. It's Declan Chug who emerges. And this is a little bit of a body blow for Glenorchy. Fought so hard in this quarter to limit North Launceston to just one goal. Yeah, just careless. I mean, phew. Yeah. I've put this one down. But anyway, uh, yeah, it's a coach killer. Declan Chug. Chug kicks the goal for North Launceston. That's their fourth, and that's a real handy one just before half time. 4 5 29. North Launceston, they lead Glenorchy 2 3 15. Margin a game high 14 points. Yeah, look, um, they've certainly got rewarded for effort there, the Bombers. I mean, their pressure's been, uh, been really good in the last few minutes around that uh, inside that 50 when that, they've had repeat entries. Um, but gee whiz. It's that fine line, Rob, isn't it? Like that, that risks out of the defence. They come off. Yeah, you know, you're away and it looks great, but uh, just a couple of risks there uh, inside their defensive 50 just didn't come off. Maybe the skill error was there as well, yeah. and uh, it's been costly on this occasion. Yeah, and I, I guess too, clock awareness is a really, really important thing. I mean, um, you know, I'm not saying you put the cue in the rack, but you just be smart with what you do. Maybe the long kick outside defensive 50 yep. might have been the go there. Down the line. Nice little spin there from Hayden, gets it back towards McInnes, but he can't take possession. Avent can. Beautifully weighted kick to Salzburger. Is there time for another late one for the Bombers? 
Squares it up now to Sam Simpson. He has a runner in Nicholas and also Bales. Siren just beats them. The Northern Bombers. And at half time, they are four goals, 5 29. The leading Glenorchy, 2 3 15. Jack Ahern, uh, leading all goal scorers, Dave, with two for the Northern Bombers. And uh, singles there to Declan Chug, who kicked that last goal, and Harvey Griffiths, who kicked the first one of the match. And for Glenorchy, Jordan Hayden and Isaac Manson are their goal scorers. Groobs is uh, doing the stats. He'll give him a second. I've got and, uh, a... Uh, you've got to get got an got AFL score for us there. Well, I, actually, Dave, I'm going to mix it up a bit this afternoon. Oh, you've got something I else. I have got something else. All right, go for it. And I know our audience would be wrapped to know the uh, it's the final of the statewide bowls uh, championships today. Fantastic. And uh, they played in the north this uh, time, but in the Premier Division, it was an absolute cracker. Port Sorrell, who have a super strong uh, representation of young players in their side, have gone down in a thriller, 59 shots to 61 to the Longford Tigers, who are the okay. reigning state champions. Now, Kingborough are the other side that will make up that trifecta. Kingborough are currently playing Port Sorrell. So I'll give you an update on that later. Oh, that's great. But I'd expect Kingborough to hang on, and it'll be the Battle of the Tigers tomorrow. <laughs> Absolutely. And speaking of the Tigers, down at Blunston Arena, it's a low-scoring game early down there at the one thirty start. It's a one one seven to the Tigers, and the Clarence Roos are three behind three points. They look twice at that score, so 7-3. to three. And before we get to Groves' stats, what's happening at the MCG, Rob? Port Adelaide up 14-8 to eight at the moment, Dave. Uh, 15 minutes gone in the first term. Half-time stats for Dave Gruber. Hit-outs, North Launceston 25 to Glenorchy's 10. Clearances, pretty even. 14 for North Launceston, 10, uh, 12 to Glenorchy. Inside 50s, North Launceston ahead there, 22-14. to 14. Marks inside 50, uh, 7 to North Launceston and 3 to Glenorchy. So North Launceston took 5 that quarter compared to the 2 in the first. So they've straightened up there. Intercept marks, 12 to Glenorchy, 10 for North Launceston and free kicks pretty even, 13 for the Magpies and 11 for North Launceston. Fairly even, Rob. Obviously, the hit-outs are, well, we say that every week with Alex Lee. Um, but, you know, those, uh, let's have a look at those inside 50. 22 to 14. So North are on top. Now, they do lead by 14 points, but there's hope for Glenorchy going to the second half, isn't there? Yeah, there is. And, and one of the things that inside 50 stats don't tell us, Dave, I mean, you could the ball could go a metre inside 50. But where Glenorchy have impressed me is that they've had the ball sat in 50 for periods of time. They just haven't always converted. Yep. And that's been the challenge. And we saw there at the end... Declan Chug with a, with a late goal in the shadows of half time. So, plenty of positives for Glenorchy, absolutely. I don't think Adrian Smith will be as wrapped, but he'd certainly be pleased with how hard the Bombers are working to try and get things back on their terms. Half time here at Utah Stadium. It's North Launceston 4 5 29, leading Glenorchy 2 3 15. We'll take a break. When we come back, we'll have Damien Gill from AFL Tasmania. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, Elgas has got you covered. Go online, www.elgas.com.au. A sponsor of City Park Radio. At City Park Radio, we can make your old audio or video come to life with the help of our digital mastering team. Your old vinyl or cassette can be transferred to CD or USB and VHS tapes made into DVD all for just a small cost. Come and see us with your vinyl, cassette tapes or VHS video at the Radio Museum in the City Park Cottage at the Cameron Street Gates. The doors open Monday to Friday, 10 till 2, helping to preserve your memories. City Park Radio. Want to learn to play music? Playing music is so much fun and has all kinds of cognitive and social benefits. Barrett's Music can help you get there. They can help select the best instrument for you, choose appropriate learning books and find a teacher. Plus, they offer flexible, interest-free payment plans. Damien, if you pick ready? an instrument that you really like, find a teacher and Thanks, put Chris. time aside each week to practice. Then you can play music. Get started now with Barrett's Music, 104 George Street, Launceston, a sponsor of City Park Radio. You're listening to Tasmanian State League Football on City Park Radio. Dave Moore, Rob.
It's been a little while. To the head of AFL Tasmania, Mr. Damien Gill. Gilly, we got you there. G'day, Maury. How are you? Good, thank you. Where can we find you on this uh, beautiful Saturday afternoon? I'm down at Signet watching Signet v Hewenville, which just got underway. Currently, Signet lead Hewenville 117 to no score. Um, there are cars everywhere, Dave. There's uh, two to three deep all around the boundary. Um, and it's magnificent conditions for footy. So, yeah, a great Saturday ahead for myself. There's a couple of big games like that today. One that comes to mind too, Gilly, is uh, Brackley versus Longford. That's often a big one as well. Yeah, absolutely. Close by and, um, yeah. yeah, fierce rivals. So, yeah, fantastic. There's just, as you say, there's a few on offing today right across the state. Good day for footy. Absolutely. Well, mate, look, we've only got 10 minutes, so I don't want to spend the whole time talking about uh, some of the things that have been happening recently because, uh, I mean, they've been well publicised. But I suppose to look at the most recent developments in uh, you know, the, the TSL finishing up and the regional league starting is that uh, you mentioned the media yesterday, I think it was. You've had a meeting with Launceston and North Launceston Footy Clubs. What can you tell us about that meeting and what was discussed? Yeah, we caught up. Um, obviously, there's been a bit said over the last 10 days or so. Uh, I think it was important to get in a room and um, talk through it. Um, clearly, we're going through a major change process and um, it means different things for different people, different clubs, different competitions, different regions. And um, there's clubs that um, clearly uh, it's a major adjustment for. Um, they've got a particular affinity connection to the competition they're playing in and um, North Lonnie and Lonnie are, are one of those and um, we acknowledge that um, this adjustment uh, in isolation is not easy for them um, nor um, the region at large and the clubs involved um, but uh, it, it is an adjustment that ultimately is going to be uh, significant for Teddy footy moving forward um, and it's going to contribute to a really strong region in the north of the state and that's what this is all about, three strong regions, three strong competitions and uh, the chat we had with North Lonnie and Lonnie was productive. Um, it didn't resolve everything, um, but it was a really important step um, towards working together um, on, on matters regarding the Northern Premier League. And uh, our role is to support the NTFA in this process and the clubs involved and, and work through it as we step towards the new structure. Um, there remains a fair bit of work to do, but... There are a lot of questions asked, a lot of information shared, uh, drilled down into uh, real specifics, and um, I think it, yeah, it was important to get in a room. Uh, it'll be the first conversation of, of many to come as we step towards 2025 and the, and the new direction for footy in our state. What do you think, when you look, look at their, their list of concerns, what do you think their major concern is going into next season, Gilly? I think they've... Uh, the TSL's been pretty kind to them and they've loved the TSL. So um, it's pretty obvious for them that any change was was going to be uh, difficult to to come to terms with because they've really liked um, the system and how it's uh, and, and what it's meant for them. And um, with any change, for some people, they really see the good in it immediately and others are, you know, a bit scared or nervous around what it means and I think they'd probably fall into that bucket and um, you can understand their perspective, absolutely um, and it's our role to work with them um, to seek their input into the competition that's coming and clearly they've voiced some concerns around um, the disparity and, and the gap between um, clubs stepping up um, and, and themselves I, I think the, the difficult thing is a lot of people have assessed the competition in the Premier League on the basis of just purely ladder results across the last year or so. I think that's a really dangerous game because we know uh, it can change really quickly. The strength of the club is in that whole pathway, the holistic view on, on a club, which is men and women, boys and girls, cradle to grave. And I think that's the important thing we want to set, set up. We want a pathway in the north of the state that funnels more kids across more clubs and uh, historically it's probably it, it has funneled into a finite pathway into, into North and Launceston. We want to broaden that base and we think that can contribute to more strong clubs at a decent level and also 
uh, importantly, um, help grow the game. So that's the big picture. But in isolation um, for North and Launceston, um, we've always been understanding of their position. Um, it, it, it's not easy for them because they've had that strong connection and affinity to the, the TSL. Um, but it, we really want them um, to have input and be involved in what comes next. And we're hopeful that from here we can... Uh, get in a room together and start to work it out. And I think the important thing is their relationship with the NTFA. They've uh, got to put some time into that. And um, I think uh, hopefully uh, we we have a new way of working um, from our chats the other day. Gilly, uh, my co-commentator today is uh, Rob Soward. Rob, you got a question for Gilly? G'day, Damien. Oh, turn your microphone on. That's better. G'day, Damien, and thanks for making some time today. And I'm really, you know, delighted to hear some of those remarks. But when Dave told us that you were joining us today, I took the temperature of uh, Tasmanian football at the moment, and I used some social media to do that. And I guess what I'm seeing at the moment, I'm seeing across the state, Damien, I'm seeing some negativity from club against club, club versus league, league versus league. And probably more worryingly for me, volunteers against volunteers. And what I see that stemming from, Damien, is probably a bit of a gap in terms of uh, what people know, what they don't know. And we know that people are pretty quick sometimes to jump in and fill in the gaps with what they don't know. Where do you see the role of AFL Tasmania at a statewide basis, Damien, in filling in those gaps so people know what the facts are, they know what things look like, rather than, you know perhaps uh, Chinese whispers or whatever that then fill in the gaps and create that angst? I think it's a really interesting point and a fair one. And one thing I've always tried to be since coming into the roles is, is accessible and I want to be on the front foot in explaining what's happening and talking through it. Um, and I think um, that's only increasingly important as we uh, move towards 2025. And I just think the more we can get out and about and work with clubs and, and leagues on what's coming, um, the more people can understand uh, the rationale and the, the bigger picture. Um, it, it is harder because I just think of the way of the media landscape and uh, sort of a bit of a, a quick bait uh, approach to getting news and information does make those things. Like I think I agree with your assertion that people are quick to jump to conclusions. Yeah. Um, but we've just got to keep working at it, um, keep working with everyone. I think the key thing is talking to the right people in our clubs and associations. Ultimately, um, we want to support and work with them and make sure the logic seeps right through the club. Um, so that's the key thing we've uh, been trying to do um, since day dot on this. Um, but clearly, we've got to keep working at it. It's one of those things that will remain a work in progress. We've just always got to stay on top of it communications, reinforcing the messaging and um, paying the picture for everyone. But I do also think, um, yeah, I, I think there's a, a bit of a culture more broadly in society that people seem a bit more angry online and quick to judge and quick to jump. Yeah. And, um, and I'll quickly add something in there before I go... Help debate. I'll quickly add something in there before I go back to Dave. Um, it's the tribal nature of football, Damien, isn't it? You know, people are often more worried about, you know, how the Tigers or the Blues or the Magpies are ever going to go rather than that holistic view of footy. Um, but as you say, um, I'd love to see more positivity online. I'll go over to Dave. I know he's got another question for you. Yeah, Gilly, with the VFL situation, I mean, it's been publicised, maybe it hasn't been publicised enough that Port Adelaide and Adelaide aren't that keen with the uh, SANFL and are perhaps thinking about moving to the VFL and then that brings up that rumour that we've heard for a while that maybe we're going to an AFL reserves competition uh, rather than the VFL. Is that landscape going to become a bit clearer in time? And is that one of the reasons why we haven't really committed to that VFL start yet, that uncertainty around what that second layer of uh, competition is going to look like? I'm glad you asked the question around the VFL. And just to touch on the question prior, the tribalism piece, um, it's a very good point. And tribalism is what makes, you know, footy so great. And I think um, it's important we celebrate that and lean into it. And it's sort of, the, it's always been the double-edged sword of the passion in footy is that people are so passionate about it, they love it, but that passion sometimes boils over. So we've just got to remind ourselves that with that passion that boils over, it comes from a place of real care and love for the game. So I just thought I'd back over that. Um, your point on VFL, I think it's um, 
uh, we're still working through it. Um, there's a lot of factors that go into it. Um, you rightly point out uh, there's the competition itself and they've, they've got work to do with their clubs and what it looks like um, for next year and ongoing. Um, that's one factor. Um, you know, what's the right timing from a club point of view? You need significant input from the club, uh, the AFL at large and AFL Tasmania. And we're, we're keen to just make sure we're considering um, with the change we're making in the local landscape, how it relates to the VFL and impacts on local clubs. That's a key consideration. So there's a lot that goes into the mix um, to answer your question, Dave. Um, and we've got to do the work and put in the time to make sure that when Tasmania enters the competition, uh, it's in a way that makes it really impactful when um, you only get one chance to make a good first impression. You don't want to come in coughing and spluttering. You want to make sure you set up for success, much like all the conversation around the AFL club at large. So uh, that's more or less the thinking. We're getting closer, um, hoping to communicate something uh, sooner rather than later, but um, I understand people's keenness to know where things are headed. Um, but we will be in the VFL competition at some point in the AFL after that, and that's um, a very, very exciting thing for our pathways and our people. Yeah, just on that point, Damien, um, it's that, it is that angst. So I'm not going to ask you this in terms of the hour and the day and the minute, but have you got a bit of an idea and just a bit of an idea for our listeners about that time frame? Are you thinking there might be an announcement, you know, in, in August or in November or just to get people thinking about that? Because, again, I think that also... He- helps ease that angst? Have you got a, a time frame you're working to with that VFL one, mate? Uh, uh, an exact month's tricky, but sooner rather than later. Like, uh, I wouldn't foresee <clears throat> we'll finish the footy season without any uh, uh, clarity on that. I think it'd be well sooner than that. Um, so, yeah, we're, we're working on it. We know it's important to people. It's important to us. Um, and we are really keen to come out and um, outline the plan um, and be able to explain to people um, when things are happening, what the timeline is um, and, and what the thinking is. So that's important that we don't rush into that, but sooner rather than later is the short answer. Thank you. Gilly, uh, one thing we do know about is the 28 by 28 initiative. And with both teams just sort of getting out in the ground, this will be my last question. What, what can you tell us about the 28 by 28 initiative? Yeah, it's our strategy to grow the game. Clearly we... Um, the footy club being announced and launched and we're up and away now. Um, it, the opportunity to unlocks from a participation point of view is massive and we've set our goal to double participation by the time the first bounce of the team happens in 2028, which is uh, a pretty significant jump, um, but we're confident we can do it. We're investing heavily into participation programs, um, strong girls kick, um, stronger school programs, working in with our local clubs to bolster um, where we can grow the game through our local pathways. And I I think that's really important. The focus a lot of the time gets put on the structures and the senior end. But our like the really important thing from our perspective is the junior space. Um, Oz Kick and Juniors, we've got to nail that and work really hard in that space. So um, that's a big part of it. Um, Facilities is a massive part of it. We've put it out there. We want goalposts in every school. Um, We've got 70 venue upgrades we're eyeing off across the state um, to increase our footprint um, but also have uh, more accessible and welcoming facilities. Um, We're also targeting significant growth across women and girls, both on-field and off-field. So there's a lot of things that go into the plan, um, including a a massive increase in umpiring um, from a pathways perspective but also just growth right across the game. So um, as I say, there's a lot in it, but we think... Um, there's a lot to work with with the uh, club coming online and further investment into the game in Tasmania and we're very, very excited about it. Exciting times ahead, Damien Gill, head of uh, AFL Tasmania. Before that you go, mate, uh, you've got a progressive score down there, Hugh and Villain Signet. I do. Signet are on top. Uh, three goals, 220. Play the Huonville Lions, one goal straight. Uh, 21 and change gone. No so, worries, mate. Uh, hot start from the host. We'll let you go back and maybe have a refreshment and mix with the folk down there. And thank you very much for joining us here on City Park Radio. It's been a pleasure. It's been a pleasure. Anytime, gents. Thanks.
Thanks, Damien. No worries. Damien Gill there from AFL Tasmania. And we've timed this pretty perfectly because uh, we're about to get underway in the third quarter. I know Tony's been down the rooms. We might have to... Run away here, third quarter. Can the Pies make a real game of this in the second half? They've done pretty well so far. From the centre bounce, Cox Goodyear fumbles slightly. Ends up here with Males. Nice handball now to Roberts. Roberts kicks to space. A lot of bombers here. One of them is Bennett. He's tackled from behind, though. Falls to Bailey Jenkins. He'll just lock it up. And be a ball up. Tony, give us uh, something you heard at halftime. The brief summary really is that uh, North North system were flat for that half. Uh, the coach highlighted that. He said there wasn't the usual celebration over things. Some of their key stats were down, like inside 50s, um, handball receives and things like that. But basically flat. Not sure how to fix that. It's up to the individual players. Just want people to, who's going to lay the first tackle, congratulate him, all that sort of thing. Thanks, Tony. So uh, we're back in the centre of the ground now with Bales. Lovely little handball. Falls nicely for Cox Goodger. Shrugs the tackle there of Kobe Phillips. Now by hand, it ends up with Van Dam over the top to Bales. Bales, smart kick to Chuck, who marks it half forward. 50 metres out by the time he kicks for goal here. He's had a few opportunities today, Declan Chug. Just kicked the one so Just far, kicked Dave. the one. Thanks, Rob. Missed a couple. He probably should have, uh, should have kicked. Sorry, in the background, we've got another game today. Infamay Park, O.L.S. against Lilydale. Declan Chug. For an early goal for North Launceston. He's kicked it. Lovely goal. Declan Chug gets the scoring underway in the third quarter. And the Bombers go now to 5-5-35. Lead Glenorchy 2-3-15. Just what the Pies didn't want, but just what North Launceston did want. And uh, respond to those comments at halftime by their coach. You took the words right out of my mouth, Dave. Uh, Back-to-back goals from Chug. One just before halftime and one to commence the um, third term, Glenorchy would want to come, would have wanted to come out and kick those first couple because you get the impression if the Bombers start to open things up, we saw it against North Hobart, didn't we? They just had the game on their terms. So it be interesting to see how they respond here, Dave. Uh, and I know that our listeners, when we talk about respond, they'll want to know what the response is in the AFL from Collingwood because at the moment, at quarter time, they're down 39 to 22 against okay. the Port Adelaide Power. I picked Port in the tipping too, so we'll see how we go with that one. Out and out of the wing from the centre clearance. Whitford over the top to Blowfield. He'll be under pressure. Gee, he did well there, did Nathan Blowfield. Got around his opponent, but uh, the ever-reliable Fletcher Bennett marks it left half back. Switching kick now to Nash. It takes a nice mark. Nash has runners. One of them here is Mitchell. Will it sit for him? It does. He gets caught there. Does Bailey Mitchell... Ball, says the crowd. Gets it to Lockie Mitchell. Now to Van Dam. He's tackled late. Turnover. Good tackle there by Roberts. Waits kick. It's going to be okay to Rowbottom. He fights for the ball. Kicks off the ground. He's held without it. Free kick, Brady Rowbottom. He kicks wide here looking for Joseph. Has to come from behind. Caught his opponent high, did Matthew Joseph. He's been pretty quiet today. And free kick there to Bailey Mitchell. Switches play to Ives. That's what they do so well here, the Northern Bombers. They've got runners. Ives now to Simpson. He's got support from Bennett from halfback. Bennett changes direction. Kicks to the centre circles. Looking for Van Dam and finds him. Possession footy here from North Launceston. A bounce from Van Dam. Kicking here towards Aganis. He's up against a couple. Oh, goes right in the back there. Blake Wade who took a very strong and brave mark. It was uh, a big size differential there. Great courage there from Waite. Waite waits the kick nicely to Roberts. A dad joke there. 45 kick. Nicely judged there by Mitchell Green. Green goes a wide option, a one-on-one. Probably risky. Brady Simpson couldn't take the mark. Leary tackled by Simpson. Falls now to Nash. Little handball. Give and go with Van Dam back to Nash. Getting a hand in nicely there was Cox. Gunther shrugs a tackle. Now to Whitford. Short kicks good to Bailey Jenkins. Jenkins plays on as a man all by himself at half forward. Get the glasses up. I think it's Isaac Manson it is. Goes short. Finds Phillips. Kobe Phillips drifted up from the back line. He might just uh, fancy himself for a shot here. His eyes are darting inside. 
Never a sign of confidence, but we'll see how he goes here. They always fancy themselves as Ford's defenders, don't <laughs> they? So we'll see how we go. Kobe Phillips twirling the ball in his hands. Shuffles in. Plays on. Tries to get the extra distance. It skews out to the right. Out of bounds on the full. 35 plays 15. Five minutes into the third quarter. Next week, we're back here at Utah Stadium. Well, what a beauty that will be. North Launceston and Clarence. Two of the heavyweights in Tassie football. Little kick from Bales. Finds Lockie Mitchell. Now to Kerr. He plays on. Has the handball over the top to Bennett, who's under pressure. Gets caught. Good tackle by Cox. Turnover. Road bottom has a man all by himself in Joseph. He can waltz in the goal here. Matthew Joseph takes a bounce. Kicks the goal for Gnorki and puts them back in touch. Smart play there, Road bottom. He just uh, knew his player was there unattended, which is unusual for North Lonsis and Rob. They're usually so tight in that back line. But Matty Joseph, all by himself, uh, easiest of goals. Yeah, they just got caught out there. I mean, I've, I've been really impressed with the first five minutes of how the Bombers have been working on getting that run going again out of the back line. They, people are everywhere here in the last uh, a few minutes just getting out and creating space. They got caught out that time. And they got caught out in the worst way possible because uh, Joseph made them pay on the scoreboard. So they're staying in touch, Dave. Uh, 14 points behind, six minutes gone in the third term. You get the feeling for mine, though, Glenorchy probably need the next one if they're going to be really looking at causing an upset here today. One goal apiece into the third quarter. Special comments, Rob Soward. Also Dave Gruber on stats. Tony Webb on the boundary. Out they come. It's time through Finlay. Well, the handball comes back to Finlay, puts him under pressure. Chi did all right to get through some traffic. Sort of got a handball away to McGann. Happy to take on the tackle from Cox Goodger and cause a secondary stoppage. They just look like they're, they're getting that link-up play going, the Bombers. From the ball up, Simpson slung, but got a kick away towards Ty and Thomas. Kicked off the ground there by Waite. He's been impressive. Waite picks it up. Good tackle, Thomas. Spills to Chug. Chug kicks towards the goal square, but uh, Gunther's there. He's had a couple of young opponents today in Agarnas and Matthews, and he's done real well as Harrison Gunther. Short kicks a beauty to Roberts. He has support from McGann. Tom McGann. Up the wing. Nice mark. McInnes extends the arms. Up against Alex Lee. Ooh, short kick. Is it 15? Just finds Whitford. Whitford, risky kick, but it pays off there to row bottom. He's been great in his return to the pies. Goes longer here to Phillips. He waits on the handball to wait. Cruises past now, Blake Wait. Lowers the eyes, finds Blowfield. He kicks inside 50. Funny old kick. Might work out all right. On the half volley, Josh Meredith. Not paid the mark. It spits out now to Ives, to Bennett. Bennett backs himself. Handballs to Van Dam under pressure. Back to Bennett. Ives lays the tackle. Good pressure there from the Glenorchy Fords, Rob, just to keep it inside their area. Yeah, it was. I mean, the, the, the coach spoke about the, the, the last kick inside 50, and it let them down there. But to their credit, they fought and wrestled and scrapped to keep the ball in that Ford area. Oh, Lee just uh, gets his opponent, who's Manson, out of the ruck contest. They'll clear it here, Van Dam. Oh, rising high there was a Hearn. Took a mark. He's up from the Ford line. He's... On the uh, defensive 50 is a Hearn. Oh, pushing the back. Surely Chug there <laughs> on his opponent. Wait, not paid. Chug kicks inside 50 here looking for Thomas. He hairs after the ball. He'll get it on the second bounce. Gets it away now to Leary. Leary right foot snap. Will kick a goal for North Launceston. Will he? No, across the face. But nice little play there from Ty and Thomas. Yeah, good pace. Yep. Uh, good pace and Leary. Smarts. Yeah, and Leary in the right spot at the right time but couldn't make them pay. Gunther, risky kick to Whitford. Second grab mark. Inside defensive 50. Cruises away. Spots up Bailey Jenkins. Jenkins kicks up the wing. Or oh, coming off the bench. Good oh. timing there was Jade Clark. Should have taken that mark. Fights on. Nicholas did well. Still a contest. Nicholas lays on his opponent. And gets him high. Yeah, luck's a fortune there. Just straight off the interchange bench and drop what he should have taken. But it's going to be a, a magpie ball. Jordan Hayden. He kicks long up the forward line. And is there a holding on free kick here? There is. 
It's going to Josh Meredith. They just held in that marking contest. It probably didn't need to happen because North had the numbers, Rob. But uh, probably a careless free kick there, Theo Ives. Yeah, it was careless. They really needed to be smarter than that because they had the out number, as you say, Dave. And now they've got a shot on goal. So uh, ideally for Glenorchy, they'll want to make them pay. Josh Meredith, the number seven. They're right behind this one. The two in a row. Josh Meredith puts it out right. It stays right. Just as the distance is, it was a mark. It's a mark to Isaac Manson. In between the right behind post and right goal post. It just faded to the right and answered at the better judgment there. He kicked one in the first quarter, Rob. Chance for a second. Yeah, he did. And uh, Tony mentioned that the Bombers were a bit flat. Well, there was no communication there. I mean, you know, punch the ball through. That's just slack defending. So he's right on the boundary line. It's a tough shot. Man in the mark, though, is only a couple of metres out. Will he go to Banana or left foot snap? Banana Manson kicks the goal for Glenorchy. That's two in a row. And they're right back into this contest here at Utah Stadium. 5-6-36, plays 4-3-27. Might get some stats here from Dave Gruber. Hit outs, yeah. North Launceston, five. Glenorchy, none so far this quarter. Clearances, three for North Launceston, two for Glenorchy. And Glenorchy have had it inside 55 times to North Launceston's four and taken four marks inside 50. Wow, four marks. And to half-time, any marks inside 50 for the Pies? Three. Three. So they've, they've uh, exceeded that. Oh, yeah. well, we've only been playing 11 minutes. Yeah, they've certainly got it. They've certainly rebounded. When the Bombers kicked that first goal, Dave, of this third term, I thought, hello, it's going to be yep. job on here. Bombers are away. But to Glenorchy's credit, they've really fought back. And Bombers are going to have to dig in here a bit and, uh, and you know, lift their level. Lee beautifully to Cox. Good jump. Kicks it to half forward. Leaning out and taking the mark there is Griffiths, who needs to lift, along with a few of those North Launceston forwards. Into the forward line, and Matthews takes a great mark. Harrison Gunther wanted a little shove out, but uh, used his hands judiciously, did young Caelan Matthews, and he's taken his third mark for the day. Yeah, he did. Hands in the right spot, and uh, he judged that ball beautifully. He's a good size, this young fellow. He's obviously a little bit light, being a younger player, but good size, good uh, good shape about him, and uh, he'll be looking to kick his first goal in the uh, in this level. Caelan Matthews, 25 out, slightly right of centre. Caelan Matthews has kicked his first goal in TSL football. The big bird, as they call him. He gets the hugs from his teammates. Great moment for the young man. And that's the steady and North Launceston needed. 6-6-42, Glenorchy 4-3-27. Yeah, it's always a great thing, I reckon, in footy when you see the players get around their teammate kicking their first goal. And uh, he's had the big bird celebration. He's, uh, he's <laughs> de- delighted with that one. Yeah, that might go with the, uh, the Dersma little uh, arrow number. Absolutely. Well, uh, the, the Bombers will be hoping he kicks a few more of those today. And... We can get to see that celebration a bit more. But yeah. he's been rewarded, Dave. He's been busy up there, hasn't he, young Kalen? Still recovering from Josh Goodyear's chips here that he brought in. It's the, the aroma has just drifted over our commentary box here. He's killing us, he? didn't share he? them either. No, he did, did, we did not a, see one He just one got a little those. bowl of them. Back in the centre, Lee with the tap. Tackled there. Is uh, Callum Thompson releases a kick. It's gone up a notch this game. It's opened out a bit. Got a few goals kicked in this quarter, two apiece. Bales leans back, kicks to the wing. Picking up is Cooper Meredith. Can't dispose of it. Players dive in left, right and centre. Comes out and out of Griffiths. He kicks inside 50, leading out his chug. Gets on the bounce. Has support from Ahern. He's kicked two today. Left foot kick off balance. Skews out of bounds on the full. It's just been interesting to see how Glenorchy adjust here. I mean, I, I know the margin is only 15 points, but... When you're playing a team like the Bombers, they can score really, really quickly. So that 15 could get out to 40 pretty quick smart. So how they adjust here, Glenorchy, will be fascinating. Yeah, you think they need to be just within that three or four goals at three-quarter time to be a chance. But certainly a good response from them from last week because they were really towed up by Lord. They had a good second half, but uh, in the first half they were blown away. Play on now through Males. Handball over the top to Gunther. He'll be under pressure. Judges the handball well. Ends up here with Finlay, who's been pretty good on debut. I like the way he moves. Kick not good on this occasion. Coughs it up to Kerr. Kerr with the handball to Cox Goodyear. Sweeps it to Bales. Sideways to Bennett. 
over the top to Lee, all by hand, North Launceston, short kick to Avent. Great team play. Now, Avent wastes no time. Matthews again. Kayla Matthews. The front position on Brady Simpson. He's taken a good mark. 30 out, directly in front. Chance for two in a couple of minutes. Yeah, well, uh, again, he read the ball beautifully there. But again, the size mismatch. He got himself in front of his opponent. And uh, Gunther, he was up against Gunther last time. That time he's got the smaller opponent. So his uh, confidence will be sky high, Dave, after that last goal. So uh, we'll be looking forward to another celebration. Got himself, salutes here. got himself the Ben Brown run up. Right back in the centre square. And the part of the Tassie Devil squad. Kalen Matthews for his second. And he snuck it in the right-hand side. Taylor Matthews, two goals in a row. And that's an important one again for North Launceston. And after that early challenge from Glenorchy, they've kicked two in a row, back out to 21 points. 7 6 48 to 4 3 27. You're listening to City Park Radio, 103.7, 96.5. What are you thinking, Rob Sowett? Yeah, look, certainly the alarm bells would be ringing in danger signs for Glenorchy. But I just want to quickly reflect on uh, Matthews. We talked about three debutants today, Thomas, Matthews and Shea. They're like a factory, the Bombers, I reckon. They, they, their junior development programs are absolutely outstanding. They put so much work into these young players, develop them into senior players, and then unfortunately many of them move on. But the three guys that have come in today have all done some great things during the course of the day. So full credit to the Bombers, Dave, on their junior development. Clearance there from Jordan Hayden for Glenorchy, who ends up there with Callum Thompson, who might have caught one high. Spits out the back to Cox, up towards half forward here. Thumped away in defence by Mitchell. Lays a tackle on Jenkins. They'll be happy with a stoppage here, Glenorchy. Rob? Well, uh, Collingwood supporters who are listening to us, the news doesn't get any better. So uh, 11 minutes gone in the second term. Port Adelaide up by 27 points. Tigers 30, Clarence 17 at Bell Reeve. Little kick out there by Meredith. Chance here for Glenorchy in the goal square. Kick out of mid-air. And it's a nice hit from Rowbottom. Brady Rowbottom has kicked the goal. And it is raining goals here in the third quarter. And Glenorchy, 5-3-33. North Thompson, 7-6-48. Good experience there from uh, Rowbottom. He and Joseph in the goal square there. And he just managed to get a boot to it. And uh, kicked it through. They won't go away, Glenorchy. I mean, and that's something irrespective of, uh, of uh, what happens that their coach would be delighted about. You know, every time the Bombers throw a challenge and string a couple of goals together, Glenorchy bounce right back. So um, full credit to them there, opportunistic goal there, but uh, a goal nonetheless, and it's narrowed that margin back to 15 points. Three goals apiece in this third quarter. We've been playing 17 and three-quarter minutes. Game's really gone up a notch in this third quarter. Aganis in the ruck now, unopposed tap out to Nash, dispossessed. Comes out there to Whitford, he kicks to half forward, Roberts is there with Jenkins, they leave it for each other. Simpson though capitalises for North Launceston. Sideways kick to Bales who can't take the mark, gets it back to Simpson who's under a bit of pressure. Good block there from Bennett. Kick towards the wing. Here's McInnes who bursts through, gets tackled from behind by Van Dam and is penalised. Unlucky on the big fella. He did have a chance to get rid of it, though, it has to be said. Van Dam kicks it backwards to Bennett. Has space. Long sweeping kick here to Kerr. Kerr plays on. He goes now towards Bales. Bales gets it to Nash by hand. Sideways kick to Bennett. So they're possessing the ball nicely here. North Launceston trying to build something. Bennett to his fellow veteran, Avent. He gets hit just as he kicks it. Leading up is Leary. Leary sideways kick. Good job. Oh, good battle there with Meredith. Nash from the spillage. Back to Bales. He'll be under pressure. Gets it back to Cox. Good job. Who's 40, uh, 55 out. Kicks to the goal square. Almost a mark there on the line. Matthews! Caelan Matthews has kicked three in one quarter. Front and centre. The big fella's doing everything. He is. Uh... He's taking marks and he's kicking goals from uh, contests. Just like that. Absolutely. He's got that centre half forward sort of build about him. I reckon he'd be about six foot, he'd be about six four in the old money. But uh, he's front and centre there. He's crumbing that like a small forward. He's having a day out. And I, I reckon uh, that'll be talked about at the gym this week, Dave. But I want to just start back here where that play started with the free kick 
earned by Oscar Van Dam with his chase down on uh, Matthew McInnes. Yep. Um, I watched Van Dam. He, he's, his running patterns and his work rate are absolutely outstanding. He, he had no opponent. Ran over, got it back, ran to another position, was in position to get another handball. They've got to tighten up these yes. Glenorchy defenders. He's doing as he likes, just watching the replay there. And he had a lovely snap by Matthews. Back in the middle. We've got a secondary ball up. Four goals to three now in this quarter. The lead is 21 points. Probably still got 10 minutes to play with all these goals that have been kicked in this third quarter. He go the Pies this time. Kick to half forward there by Cox. Chance here, spinning out his Manson, and he'll kick another one for Glenorchy. Superb there from Isaac Manson. He just backed himself, spilled out of the contest, turned around, said, I'm going to kick this goal, and he did. Well, footy's a funny game, isn't it, Dave? Till halftime, we had six goals kicked, uh, and uh, between them, Manson's got three and Matthews has got three. So it's, it's just been crazy. It's been floodgate time in this uh, third quarter, but making for some really, really entertaining footy in a game. They're not going away, Glenorchy, are they? They're just going yep. to keep chipping away. So, uh, really entertaining game of football. Three goals in game number 100 for Isaac Manson. Groups, uh, what are we, inside 50s this quarter? Uh, eight to North Launceston, seven to Glenorchy. So, pretty even clearances. Yeah, yeah six to Glenorchy, five to North Launceston. Good conversion rate from both teams. Four goals apiece. Here's Cox Goodger. One bounce, two bounce, gets to 50. Brad Cox Goodger falls short. His Lee, though, will take a mark on his chest. Out in front of Josh Meredith. Tough shot for the big fella. He's thinking about playing on quickly. Harvey Griffiths lurking there in the pocket, Rob. Yeah, he's sniffing it around sniffing like he's around. I know Alex Lee doesn't mind a shot on goal. He kicks across the face. One behind. He didn't uh, do the old snap there. He went no. for the straight ahead kick. He One did. behind. Cox Good, you were streaming through. I thought we've seen this movie before, yes. have we? Didn't we? 8 7 to 6 3, 16 points, 21 minutes gone. Short to wait from the goal square. Blake Waite. Lovely kick. Finds Thompson. Handball's back to Waite. He followed up. He's got a man at half 40. Tries to spot up. Getting in the way though. Was Bailey Mitchell. Dropped the chess mark he perhaps should have taken. Plays the tackle. Ball up. Um, it's been very interesting how Glenorchy have picked their way through this Northern Bombers defence. And I know that there'll be a lot of other clubs and particularly yes. Clarence next week, they would be watching the tape on this one, I'd suggest. The North Hobart just couldn't do it last week. They were just camped inside their defensive 50. But some smart players, and Blake Waite's been terrific. His, his disposal is just elite. Yeah, they've been calm, haven't they, with how they've gone about it? Free kick. Uh, it's going to be play on. Oh, gee, the umpire thought about it. Probably should have been, because the ball came out to row bottom. But it's going to come back to McInnes. This next goal is going to be pretty important, you'd think. Rob or McInnes, gee, that was a risky kick, but it came off to Brady Simpson. The difference between 22 points and maybe 10 will be significant. Oh, the handball to Meredith went straight through his fingers. Now the rebound. Leary to Aganis. Charge inside 50. There's three against one back here. The turnover is going to kill them, I think, here. Lee will hand over to Griffiths, and Griffiths will kick a goal from the goal square. Oh, they kill you, those turnovers. And just a bit of sloppy work there in the middle. And the number disparity there inside 50 for North Launceston. Three to one, game over. Yeah, and that's where the champion side's opening up. I mean, uh, they've been better switching the ball back through the middle, Glenorchy. But a simple mistake uh, leads to a very, very easy Harvey Griffiths goal. So, um, like you say, Dave, uh, the difference between 20, to what have we got, 22 points. Um, as opposed yep. to uh, 10. Yep, that's the swing goal, I'd say. It just kills you. So uh, we'll have a few minutes to go in this third term. So Glenorchy certainly won't want to bleed any more scores, that's for sure. Five goals to four. North Lonson's way in this quarter. Lovely bounce by umpire McEntee. McKinnis wins the tap. Trying to burst through his row bottom. Might have been caught high. Still a contested ball. Again, to Van Dam. Smart handball to Sulzberg. If it sits, it does. He's tackled from behind. Right foot inside 50. Comes out here to Shea. A little handball to Leary. His handball is uh, no good as it comes now to Waite. Kicks outside 50 in desperation. 
Aganis, ooh, big clash there with Rowbottom. They went through looking for uh, contact. It's going to be a ball up, attacking side of the centre circles for North Launceston. It's not too often we call a North Launceston game and the name Brandon Leary hasn't popped up on the score sheet, no. Dave. So uh, a quiet one from him so far. McInnes with the tap again. Sulzberger's strength. Gets it to Van Dam inside 50. And oh, he almost got that one. Waits there, though. Takes the ball. High tackle from Matthews on this occasion. First thing the young man has done wrong today. Perhaps in, uh, he missed a couple of goals early, maybe the other, but uh, he's kicked three in this quarter. Wait switches play. Finds Simpson. Goes wider to Blowfield. He's going to go back to the goal square to wait. He's got options here. On the near side, one of those is Cooper Meredith. He goes back, though, to Blowfield. Oh. He's kicked it out of bounds on the full. The umpire has kicked, he's picked it. That is the boundary umpire. So just over finessing inside defensive 50. Very impressed with the pressure Caelan Matthews put on the kicker there too. He contributed to that error. And another debutant in Lockie Shea is on the boundary line. Gee, wouldn't this be a highlight if you could convert this one? Yeah, he had uh, the other debutant, Thomas, running at him pretty <laughs> hard, demanding the footy. Lockie Shea, 30 out on the boundary line, left-hand side. Kicks to the face of goal, won't make the distance. Matthews is there again, goes early. But uh, waiting there for the mark behind him was Ahern. I almost said Adam Ahern, it's Jack Ahern. Who takes the mark? 10 metres out, slight angle. He's kicked two, two today, so Rob. Far, yep. Been pretty lively, especially in that first half. Was their major target up forward, and a few of the others were down a little. Should convert this one for their sixth for the quarter, and the 10th overall. Great quarter of footy. Jack Ahern, left foot, kicks the goal. Six of the best in the third quarter for North Launceston. And they're out now to 10-7-67 to 6-3-39. They've uh, withstood the onslaught of the Norky, and now they're starting to move away, and this is what good teams do. Yeah, they do, Dave, and that's why, you know, I love watching them on this big ground here. Their game style and this ground just complement each other beautifully. And uh, when they get moving with their ball out of the middle and feeding it into their forwards... They just look super, super dangerous. So, uh, yep, like I said, warning bells for sure for Glenorchy. Uh, so we'll have to see how they adjust to it. But you do get the feeling that the Bombers are going to grab this one by the scruff of the neck and uh, and go full steam ahead with a quarter and a bit to play. Half-time, Tigers 13 points over Clarence. Haven't got a score yet in Waterdale, Launceston. We've got a free kick going the North Launceston's way from the centre square contest. Blade Sulzberger, short to Lee. Handball's now to Van Dam. Inside 50. Matthews! Leads out, takes it on the chest. 35 out, slight angle. He's got some pace off the mark, Rob Soward. Yeah, he has. When he's got one-on-one -on -one with his opponent and he gets in front, long legs, and uh, really gets a, you know, that, that, that one metre that you get on your opponent in that sort of position. He does, and uh, again, he was the only person that could mark that. So he'll be looking to add his fourth for the quarter, Dave. 35 out, 45 degree angle on the left hand side for four and a quarter. Kalen Matthews, four in the third quarter. What a magnificent start to his career in the TSL for the young man. He's dominated inside 50 and the margin now to 34 points, 11 7 73 to 6 3 39. It's the difference between the two sides, isn't it? Between him and Ahern, you look at them as those tall marking options. At the other end of the ground, Glenorchy just have to work that much harder for their goals, don't they? They don't have a 6'4", a 6'5", a 6'6", guy who draws the defender and creates that, uh, you know, gets that ball to ground. Uh, these guys, the young guys, 6'4", just create that contest good in the air, good on the ground, both of them. And we've got a size mismatch yep. there too, as you can see how they're being, uh, being manned up. Blades Salisbury is not a spectacular footballer, but every time we see him, he just, uh, he's just growing as a footballer. Especially his disposal on that left foot. Here he is on cue. Kicks inside 50. It's not great on this occasion. It's, uh, it's marked by Blowfield, but an interesting quarter of footy, a great quarter of footy. Really entertaining. And we'll catch our breath there. 11 7 73. 
So that was seven goals, two in that quarter. Glenorchy not bad either. 6 3, 39, four goals straight, 34 point margin. It's a really enjoyable quarter of footy, Dave. I mean, again, I'll be the first to admit, Tony uh, called it before the game. I was with him. I thought this would be a blowout. But uh, it's been a really, really good game of footy. And again, seven goals to four in that quarter. I'll go through the goal scorers. So we've got some multiple goal scorers, Dave. Multiple goal scorers, Kalen Matthews leading. First game at this level, he'd be thinking this is pretty easy. Four goals in a quarter. He'd be on for 16 for a match next week, I reckon. <laughs> Kalen Matthews with four. Three to Jack Ahern and... Uh, Doubles to Declan Chug and Harvey Griffiths for North Launceston. For Glenorchy, Isaac Manson. I've been really impressed with his game, Dave. He's, uh, he's kicked three. And singles there to Jordan Hayden, Matt Joseph and Brady Rowbottom. So, uh, as you say, three-quarter time, 11-7-73 North Launceston. Glenorchy, 6-3-39. We'll see uh, what awaits us after the three-quarter time huddles. Don't use too much hyperbole. That was a pulsating quarter of footy. That, that's, I think that's the best quarter of footy we've seen this year. Both teams had a red-hot go, but it, it just opened up. There was space. Um, and, and both teams, uh, yeah, can, can take credit for that. North Launceston, of course, are in front of the contest, 34 points. So they're the better team to three-quarter time. And Grooms, uh, do your stats play that out? Hit outs, yep. North Launceston on, on top there. Been on top all day. 37 to 15 for Glenorchy. Clearances, North Launceston 23, Glenorchy 18. Inside 50s, 13 that quarter for North Launceston to take them to 35. And Glenorchy on 21. Marks inside 50, 7 for Glenorchy and 14 now taken for North Launceston. They took 7 that quarter. Intercept marks, 11 for North Launceston and 15 for Glenorchy. And Glenorchy have 19 free kicks to North Launceston's 16. Yeah, interesting stats there, especially inside 50s in that quarter. 13 to North Launceston, 7. Glenorchy, four goals out of the seven entries. And uh, North Launceston, 7 out of 13. So, pretty good conversion rate. Rob, you've got uh, some information there on the AFL. Yeah, I know a lot of our Glenorchy listeners, by virtue of the fact that they're the Magpies, Dave, they will uh, be Collingwood supporters. Don't know about that. They've clawed back to uh, only being seven points behind Port Adelaide. And they're in the shadows there of uh, half-time. So... uh, it uh, must be a pretty good game. 51, and they're back now within a goal. 51 to 45 with uh, a couple of minutes to play. A pretty good game here. It's three-quarter time, and it's North Launceston 11, 7, 73. Glenorchy 6, 3, 39. Back in a moment here on City Park Radio. Play your cards right with new LPG deals from Elgas. Whether you're moving in or you're settled in, make the switch online today. From LPG account credits, fixed pricing and carbon offset options, LGAS has got you covered. Don't lose out. Visit the website, choose your new deal and sign up today. Go online, www.lgas.com.au. LGAS, local, safe and reliable. A sponsor of City Park Radio. Put your trust in Rainbow Building Solutions, the experts for all your fully engineered garages, sheds, carports, patios and awnings. We can supply kit-only materials for your builder or owner-builder or fully project manage, which includes council approvals, all inspections, concreting and, of course, the installation. No need to deal with multiple contractors. No stress. Rainbow Building Solutions is a local, family-owned Tasmanian company with over 20 years' experience. For a free no-obligation quote, please call 1300 737 910 or visit our website, rainbowgarages.com.au. Rainbow Building Solutions, a sponsor of City Park Radio. The Launceston Players is presenting The Pillow Man. Imagine a totalitarian state where a writer is being questioned about a spate of murders except they all bear similarities to his short stories. Is this life imitating art or something more sinister? We'll leave it to you to enjoy this black comedy. The Pillow Man is on stage for one week only from April 24 at the Earl Arts Centre. For details and ticketing, inquire at the Princess Theatre box office. The Launceston Players, a sponsor of City Park Radio. You're listening to great TSL action. Tasmanian State League football on City Park Radio. Dave Moore, Rob Sowart, Dave Gruber and Tony Webb giving you the action here today in round four of the TSL. Really interesting game. North Launceston 11 7 to Glenorchy 6 3 The Bombers led by 14 points at halftime, one point at quarter time. But uh, they stretched their lead there with seven goals, two to four goals straight. We really have to acknowledge that uh, four goals in a quarter, Rob. That, that's, uh, you don't see that from a debutante every day. But it's the way in which he did it. He led confidently for the marks. He took a contested mark. 
He snapped a goal, so you know, showing a full range of skills there. And I know he's not in the Tassie Devils team tomorrow, but they certainly will be looking at this performance. Yeah, I've been really pleased, and not only just with those uh, things that you mentioned, Dave, but just his defensive work. I mean, he led to his teammate getting a shot on goal because he, he ran back and put that pressure. It's very easy when you've kicked a couple to be, you know, up and about and you're looking around and you're not concentrating. Just that effort, I think, was terrific. So he's certainly someone they'd be looking at, I think, Dave, as you've suggested. Tony was down at the North Launceston huddle at three-quarter time. What did uh, Coach Adrian Smith have to say, Tony? He was really pleased with that quarter. He looked for the lift uh, at half-time and he got it through the unexpected quarters of young Thomas. Uh, Thomas? Kalen yeah. Matthews. Matthews, sorry. Yep. He's also pleased with Thomas too, actually, because he liked his run, uh, particularly the first part of that quarter. He really wants them to put their foot down and just play the style of football that they can play. Enjoy the quarter, but be ruthless with it. He wants more inside 50s, uh, a bit more sort of direct stuff, and uh, the defence tied up just a little bit further than what they did in that quarter. Thanks, Tony. Interesting that uh, oftentimes in these sort of games, towards the end of the game, if they feel like they've got the game under control, uh, they give Alex Lee a bit more of a spell in the ruck, and we notice that Tony Aganis is, is going to take the, the first tap here of the last quarter. Today's broadcast brought to you by Elgas for all your LPG needs statewide. Talk to the locals with knowledge, phone 13 11 61. It's repeating with a, a umpire on debut today, Ryan Gregson, done a fine job. I think the umpires have done a, a pretty good job across the board today, Rob. Well, they have, and I, th I think one of the things we know that umpires have challenges getting uh, umpires uh, at any level, Dave, but um, the, the, the work and development they put into them is terrific, and uh, there's certainly been a really, really good uh, standard of umpiring this season, and particularly today. So, uh, all, all great for our game. Last quarter action here on City Park Radio. Don't forget we're back here next week for North Launceston and Clarence. Should be a beauty. Taking the ball's row bottom, been great today in his return to the club. Kicks to half forward, Bennett though, sharks it. Over the top to Sulzberger. He gets it on now to Aganis. His handball smothered by McInnes. Back to Aganis. To Sulzberger again, one of the best on the ground. His kick's a pretty good one to Cox Goodger, who's got runners galore. One of those is Bennett. Handball's now to Bales. Bales from the centre square, inside 50. Gee, that's a really tough mark taken nicely by Brandon Leary. He plays on, he's 45 out. Kicks wide here. Matthews will be over his head. And through for a behind. Um, I know that the Collingwood supporters are out there, Dave, and they'll be jumping out of their skins. They're up by two goals now. Right. Still not quite half time. Things have turned around. 11 8 74 to 6 3 39 here at Utah Stadium. I suppose from uh, Josh Arnold's point of view, Rob, he wouldn't want things to blow out in this quarter. They've done a lot of hard work to stay in this contest. And they wouldn't like a 50 or 60 point margin. No, they wouldn't. And again, if you're on the bus on the way up from Glenorchy today, you'd be coming up to win the game. Absolutely. But you wouldn't want to be going home getting beaten by, you know, 15 goals when you've been so competitive all day. And they had a good win in the D-League earlier by 43 points, the Pies. Breaking out there nicely is Callum Thompson to Roberts. Back now to uh, Joseph, I think it is, who gets uh, the kick out of defence. Mark taken there by... The impressive Mance, and his kick's not great, though. Looking for Joseph, and the ball goes out of play. Well, Isaac Manson, three goals in his 100th game for the Magpies. Yeah, he's, and he's looked dangerous, too, hasn't he, every time the ball's gone near him. So uh, a great milestone for him, and he's uh, celebrated well at a personal level. Beautiful day here at Utah Stadium. Warm conditions. Boundary throw in, taken by Manson, threads the handball to Jordan Hayden, inside out kick, and he kicks his second for Glenorchy this afternoon here at Utah Stadium. That was smart work there by Manson. Found the classy Jordan Hayden, and that's a good team lifter at the start of the last quarter. 7 3 45 Glenorchy, and the Bombers 11 8 74. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, you'd always, when you're in that position that they're in, you always want that first goal of that. Uh, that final term, and, and that's exactly what they've done. They wouldn't have want the Bombers to get away from them, so they're not going away. You know, uh, it's going to be a big effort from to, to win from here. I mean, they've kicked six, well, up until now, seven, but they've kicked six goals for three quarters, so to think they're going to kick six or seven in a quarter, it's a big effort. Smart kick from Jordan Hayden, wasn't yeah, it? That, yeah, that, it was. We see it now that instead of going on the left foot, it's that inside-out uh, right foot kick. Yeah, it's Manson beauty. was involved in that as well, and yep. we talked about what a good game he's had. Nice bounce from the umpire. Almost taken by McGuinness out of the ruck. Oh, there's a high tackle there late on Robottom or pushing the back, whatever you like. Free kick. Been good, Brady Robottom? 
Yeah, he has. He's worked hard, really hard through the middle for them today. Tough body work. Goes wide here. Looking for Mitch Green. Takes it as Green. He's tackled straight away. Slung in the tackle by Jacob Kerr. Ball flips out. Probably lucky it did because it uh, might have been penalised there. Ball up. So another attacking move here for Gnorgi. As Rob said there, just a chance. When you're within five goals in the last quarter, this gives you a little bit of a sniff. Aganis wins the ruck contest, takes it. Tyne Thomas takes the ball on the bounce. Nice fly. Takes it with him. Takes a bounce. Thomas takes a second bounce. He's on the boundary line. Kicks inside 50. Tries to set it up for a teammate. Leary takes it. He's tackled straight away by Males. But just a little bit of excitement there from Tane Thomas. Yeah, you can see why the, the Bombers folk are uh, so excited about him. I mean, he just put the Jets on on oh. that far side of the ground and no one was going to catch him, Dave. Matthews in the ruck contest. Wins it nicely to Sulzberger. Kicks high to the goal square. Holds up. Bounces the wrong way for North Launceston. Back into play. Chug snap. Across the face. Might land inside play. Does. Stays in play. Thomas is there again. Takes the ball, the youngster. Handball's not great on this occasion. And they might just break out here. Glenorchy, close to the boundary line, taken over by Jordan Hayden. Yeah, beautifully disguised there from Hayden. He wanted that boundary line. He wanted that boundary line uh, very, very promptly to, uh, to greet him. And uh, the umpire's going to throw it in. And try not to compare... Tane Thomas to Taron too much. They're different people. But uh, that run there just reminded me a little bit of a young Taron, I have to say. Yeah, absolutely. Just uh, covers the ground really, yep. really well. And he uh, certainly looks like an excitement machine, doesn't he? Absolutely. From the ball up. Spills out here towards Jackie Avent. Gets to 50. Launches towards goal. But he didn't judge the kick very well. And Harrison Gunther... Takes an intercept mark back there for the Pies. Short kick now to Josh Meredith. Sorry, Cooper Meredith inside defensive 50. Kicks it low. Or kick from Roberts. Finds Joseph. Sideway kick to Males. Who decides not to play on wisely. Up here towards Roberts. Who takes the mark on the wing. Adam Roberts. Goes with a 45 kick. But getting in the way there is Fletcher Bennett. Gee, it was a heavy contest. With that uh, Glenorchy player slow to get up. Just uh, keep an eye on that. That's uh, row bottom. Meanwhile, it's at half four for North Launceston. Avent to Thomas, who's got a shot on goal, 35 out, 45 degree angle. We've seen the debutante Matthews kick four. And now a chance for Tane Thomas. Yeah, what a great way to start your senior career. He's, uh, he had a quiet stage. He was quiet for the first two and a half quarters, but uh, he certainly opened things up, Dave, in this last turn. Takes a little while, doesn't it, uh, to get used to the pace of that game coming up from Development League. But, uh, he's sort of adjusted now, I think. Tane Thomas for his first goal in TSL football. It is offline. One behind. 11 9 75. So it's an even five goal lead now. 7 3 45 the Pies. Short kick comes into Roberts. Sideways, looking for Blake Waite. Pinpoint accuracy, had to be right on the boundary line. Spots up Simpson. Be pretty good at this all day, the Pies. Just working in a way out of defence. This is the crucial kick now, though. Oh, it's a dangerous one. It's not going to come off. Kalen Matthews follows up. Kicks for goal. It's number five. Can you believe it? In his first game of TSL footy, Showed great agility there to pick up the ball from the contest and snapped it from 30 out directly in front. But that was a tough goal for a youngster to kick, and he's done it beautifully, Rob Sowett. Oh, he, he did. And again, it comes back to, you know, working. It's very, very easy, Dave, when you're, uh, 
you don't have the footy to uh, to be ball watching and just watching the game unfold in front of you. Matthews was got himself into the right position. It was a poor kick. Switching the ball there is always fraught with danger, but to his credit, Matthews got his hands on it and uh, he's got a handful of goals. Yeah, we said that was a crucial kick. Gee, uh, you're kicking it to a contest. 30 metres out from your goal directly in front, you're asking for trouble. Uh, just spilt off the uh, contested ball. Kalen Matthews sharked it nicely. And he's kicked a beautiful goal. Seven minutes gone in the last quarter. Margin now 36 points. Bo Nash kicks inside 50, looking for Thomas. Spills it to Ahern. Looking for support from Leary. He's got it now. Reins it in with the right hand. Breaks two tackles. Kicks poor. Finlay to Roberts. Shrugs a tackle. Then fumbles the ball. Somehow gets his boot to it. And he's going to be caught uh, holding the ball, is he? No. I no, didn't have it. Didn't have it. So back to Adam Roberts, who's uh, been a really good contributor. Pretty injury-free game so far today, which is good for both teams. Oh, we get the expletive there as the mark was dropped by Hayden. And now he's tackled. He's going to be caught holding the ball. He is. It might be Bo Nash with those green boots who emerge with the free kick. It is. I think uh, he said what many of us were thinking, Dave. <laughs> Uh, the effects Mike didn't pick that one up. Oh, I think it did. Probably <laughs> did, I think. Probably did. Family Never friendly mind. here. Family friendly Absolutely. here at City Park. They'll uh, bleep that one out. Nicholas back to Ives. They've switched it. Now off to the fat side of the ground through Bennett. Oh, Kerr drops an easy mark. Opens the door now for Manson, who just pumps it inside 50. There's nobody there for Glenorchy. Bennett will get back there first, but the boundary line might win. He makes sure it wins. But a good territory gain there by the Pies. A rare skiller there from the Bombers. Yeah, it was. Um, Kerr wouldn't mind his time again at that one, but uh, you just can't drop them there. But the Bombers, again, as they do, they set up so well in defence. They had the numbers there, and Fletcher Bennett escorted that one over the boundary line. Goal apiece in this last quarter. A few players looking tired now. The wide expanses of Utah Stadium, Rob, on a warm day does uh, tax you a bit. Absolutely, and I reckon there'll be some sore players tomorrow because, again, it's been a real spectacle, hasn't it? They've uh, Loved it. They've had a real crack. If you wandered in here from Invermay Road and thought, what's going on, you would have uh, got your money's worth. I tackled there on Sulzberger. It's uh, in a mountain of possessions today. He's got a couple of players to switch if he wants to. He's going to go the railway wing option. Plenty of Gnorky players there. They probably spoiled each other. Over the back. Taken away by Ahern. Kick's not great towards attacking 50. Simpson's got it. He's tackled by Leary. Gets a handball out of Jenkins, mm. who's met in a strong tackle by Ahern. Cox Goodyear to Chug. Now to Griffiths, who has space. 30 out. Will kick on goal to Thomas. Oh. Oh, I don't think he was passing it to Thomas there. He was going for goal, but uh, Thomas was in the right spot. Just evaded his grasp. And I just looked at the, the reaction from Kalen Matthews, who was the most available forward that you would ever see in mm. most available forwards. He was presenting Dave. He wanted that ball. Might see if we can get a word with him post-game. Kalen Matthews, the number 42. Here's Cox Goodger. Centering kick. Ahern again. Tackled from behind by Whitford. Shrugs the tackle. Tries to get it to Leary. He's got a nest of pies around him. Out it comes now to Nash. Griffiths emerges. Right foot snap. Misses to the left. They're just starting to attack the goals relentlessly now. North Launceston. and 12 11 83 to 7 3 45. Ten minutes gone. Last quarter. Males from defensive 50. Goes wide looking for Blowfield. He's white. It's around. Handball to space. Not effective. Leary. His handball's not great either. Bailey Jenkins meets the tackle from Ahern. No prior, says the umpire. We're still 30 out from North Launceston's goal. They lead by 38 points. From the ball up. Gunther and Matthews. Gunther, little kick on his far as Cox Goodger. He's laid upon. Another stoppage. He does it all, Matthews. He'd be thinking it's pretty easy, this state league caper, wouldn't he? 
And the ball up. I just have a quick look to see these teams play next week. The next stoppage. Cox could you lays a tackle. Allows me, I think, to do it. No. Here comes Griffiths for goal. He's missed another one, Harvey, Harvey Griffiths. Harvey, Harvey, Harvey. He's kicked a couple today. But uh, he's probably left a couple out there as well. One behind. Kick from Miles finds Gunther. Gunther to the wing. Spills to the back. Taken by Lockie Mitchell. Gets it to Cox Goodge, who's had a lot of possessions today. You don't notice him, but he uh, just keeps on getting it. Swings it towards Thomas. Good spoil from behind. Off they go. Well under the Glenorchy defence there. That was Clark with a nice spoil and mark, as it turned out. He kicked it to the centre of the ground. Finlay there. Tackled by Van Dam. Ball spills out. Contested footy. Nash lays on it. Should be a ball up. It is. So next week... Uh, North Launceston, of course, here at the Clarence will be covering that game. And Glenorchy at home. Of course, it's the Anzac Day game. I should remember that. Uh, against the Tigers. Glenorchy and the Tigers at KG5. Here they go now. Salzberger, one bounce. Gets to 50. Kicks to the goal square. Griffiths in good position. Gee, Bailey Jenkins did well there. He had to attack the contest from the front. Didn't infringe. And Jenkins, in the end, uh, wins himself a stoppage. Great uh, courage there from Jenkins. I was yep. going to say, he'll go over and pick his head up and put it back in his jumper uh, there. He, he got collected pretty high. Carlin Matthews wins it down. Shea's there on debut. And it's out of bounds. There's lots to like about these debutants, Dave, isn't there, today? Yeah. For, for, in fact, for both sides, I've liked, uh, I've liked uh, Finlay Finlay's from Glenorchy, but the three Bombers guys have uh, been pretty good, haven't they? Been terrific. 13 minutes gone. Down to throw in. Matthews wins the tap. Trying to spin out was Clark. Snap. Sulzberger misses. 12-13-85. So what's that? That's uh, one goal six in this quarter. Yeah, they've, uh, as you said, Dave, they've left a few out there. They've been a bit wasteful. Inside 50s to Dave Gruber in this quarter, please. 10-2, to two, North yep. Lancaster. Roberts gets a hand to it. Comes out now to Finlay. He's kicked up the wind looking for Manson, but it's way off mark. Taken easy by Ives. Back to Lockie Mitchell. Kick looking for Van Dam. Front position, row bottom. Spills to, I think it's Bailey Mitchell there, who's tackled from behind. It'll be a stoppage. On centre wing. Got a nice message after the game last week, uh, Dave, uh, from Robin McKendrick, uh, former long-serving Launceston City Council and grandfather of Oscar, who loves listening to the uh, City Park Radio football. Fantastic. Hope you're listening, Robin. Enjoying another win, perhaps, here for the Bombers. Coming in is Jesse Cox. Can't take it with him. Out now to Chug. Chug for goal. It's going to fall short to Gunther. Takes another intercept mark back there. One of many today. Plays on immediately, looking for Roberts. He's met from behind illegally by Jack Avent. Free kick, Adam Roberts. Been amongst the best for Glenorchy today. Tries to spot up Hayden. Not a great kick. Hayden fumbles. Falls on the opponent. Spits out. Van Dam. Chance for a goal here. Two bounces. 30 out. Oscar Van Dam kicks one for North Launceston. Easy as you like. No opposition there. And uh, punished for the turnover there with the Pies. And Van Dam reward for effort. He doesn't kick a lot of goals, but... Uh, Gee, you finished beautifully on that occasion, Rob Sowett. Yeah, I wouldn't mind having uh, a, a little uh, Fitbit or something on him just to see how much running he does. Mm. He certainly, uh, as he said in the article in the media during the week, the pre-season he did with Casey yep. certainly helped him. But it um, was a bit uncharacteristic from Glenorchy today. I think their defence has been really, really good, Dave. They've, they've thought their way through stuff, but in that uh, particular instance, uh, they've made a mistake and Van Dam hurt them in the best way that he could, and that is uh, another goal to the Northern Bombers. Starting to look a little bit tired, the Pies. Yeah, so they as we are. Say, it's a big ground, warm day. I mean, KG5 is a big ground as well, but uh, you, you stayed so bravely with North Launceston for so long. Marge now 46 points. Cox Kutcher, he's, he's the master at playing for that free kick. Not saying it wasn't there, but uh, he made the umpire see it. There's no doubt about that. Did the veteran. Inside 50 to Griffiths. Oh, gee, extends the arms. Met that powerfully. Takes the mark. Man on the mark, 45 out. Left of centre. 
Still uh, two goals in the AFL. It's half time. So Collingwood up by 12 points at half time against Port Adelaide, Dave. Mentioned that Josh Arnold probably didn't want this margin to blow out. We've still got, let me see, 10, 12 minutes to go. And North Launceston, we know they're fit. They're the fittest team in the competition, I reckon. They will run this game out. Harvey Griffiths kicked two goals today, both from the goal square. This one's 50 out. Leans back, kicks it beautifully, Harvey Griffiths. He's got three this afternoon. And that margin now out to 52 points, 14, 13, 97 to 7, 3, 45. Yeah, that's the disappointing thing. I guess if you open the newspaper tomorrow, Dave, and, uh, you know, uh, sadly, as we know, there's a few online cowboys yes. out there that open the newspaper and they'd post something derogatory about football online. But, in fact, it's been a pretty good game of football all day and it's uh, that superior fitness and skill that you talked about in this last quarter particularly. And I think the warm day, uh, you know, it's got. we talked about Glenorchy would struggle to hold them for four quarters. And uh, again, we didn't have to be Nostradamus to know we'd be right on that one. Uh, and it's all bombers at the moment. In the ruck now is Josh Meredith up against Lee. And they're just smashing him in the clearances now. We'll get Dave Gruber's stat on that a moment as Cox Goodger drives inside 50. Ball ricochets everywhere. Gunther emerges. Hits the handball sideways. Blake Waite with a nice kick. Finds Roberts. Chance to build something here. As Roberts gets it to Jordan Hayden. Kick across halfbacks taken by Jenkins. Spots up Phillips. Who started the day in defence. Has moved up more of a forward roll. Kobe Phillips now back to Hayden. They're not gaining any ground though. Going a bit sideways here. Lots of possessions. There's the kick they need to make it work for them. Oh gee, that's a good mark there by Bales. Now to Cox Goodger. Inside to Nash. Salisbury is unopposed inside 50. So there's that turnover again, Rob. Yeah, and there's tied football. I mean, you, why you'd leave Blade Salisbury by himself when he's probably been one of the best players on the ground. Absolutely. Uh, you, you wouldn't know. That's just tied. Clearances Clearance for Dave Gruber this quarter. Nine for North Launceston and uh, three for Glen Orkey. Tells a tale, Rob. Yeah, it does tell a tale. And that's what good sides do. They ramp up the pressure. Cox Goodge has been fantastic this quarter. I mean, we do forget about him a bit sometimes, don't we? But uh, he's just been class, pure class. Here's Salzburger for his first of the day. This one's going to sneak inside. It is inside the right-hand goalpost. And Blade Salzburger, one of the best on the ground for me today here at Utah Stadium, has kicked a well-deserved goal. What's that, Groobs? Uh, 16 or 15? Uh, scoreboard 15. Scoreboard was pretty quick on that one. 15-13, 103. To 7 3 45, so it's four goals, six in this quarter to one goal straight. Adrian Smith would certainly be very, very pleased with the way the Bombers have uh, put the foot on the gas in this last quarter. Uh, and, you know, they, they probably should be further in front. Uh, Griffiths uh, was a bit wasteful. Mr. Couple, he probably should have uh, given off, that's for sure. But uh, it's been all Bombers, Dave. Here's a bit of a surprise, Rob, at uh, K, not KG5, at uh, the tip at Lauderdale, Skybus Oval. Launceston 5 5 35, leading Lauderdale 3 8 26. Yeah, it is a bit of a surprise. Yeah, a couple don't... of goals to Rocky Barron and Ben Hyatt. So keep an eye on that one. Well, of course, they'll be finishing after us, but we'll see what happens there. Bo Nash inside 50 for the uh, Bombers here. Jenkins shrugs a tackle. Lockie Shea tried to get a handball away. Griffiths can't get an effective possession. Bo Nash inside out. Off to the left. 15 14, 104 to 7 3 45. And in the other game, uh, Clarence, wow, they've uh, taken the front there now, 7 7 49 to 5 2, oh, sorry, 4 8 32, the Tigers. Meredith now gets it to half forward to Joseph. Reasonably quiet today. Gets around his opponent, kicks to a lead, beautiful pass, finds Nathan Blowfield. He's 40 out directly in front. Good play there from the Pies. Yeah, there's certainly a lot of good takeaways from today, Dave. Again, as I said, I, I came here today uh, thinking this was going to be one-way traffic. But uh, there's a lot of really positive signs in this Glenorchy side with how they go about it. And, you know, I'd love to see them con keep continuing this. And, uh, you know, the way Kingborough are battling a bit today, Glenorchy uh, would go into that game full of confidence of giving a good performance next uh, on Anzac Day. Nathan Blowfield has kicked the goal. No, one behind, just to the left. Off hand. No, oh, well, it was off hands. No, just missed. 
Umpire's conferring here. Maybe he's getting a little bit of help from the central umpire. It's one of those ones that was very close to the post. I think uh, field umpire said yes, it was one behind. Yep. Good play there from the goal umpire. And sometimes when, and I've done a bit of goal umpire at school level, it's very close to the post. Yeah. Sometimes it's not as easy as people think. No, that's right. So umpiring is a very easy thing to do when you're online, Dave. That's, that's what, right. you, what you find. Fletcher Bennett in, back into the goal square from whence it came to Lockie Mitchell, who shorts it to Bales. Looking for an exit out of their defensive 50. The 22-minute mark, and they find one here through Bennett. Great kick from Bales. Simpson back to Bennett. Another great game from Fletcher Bennett. Very consistent player at the TSL, there's no doubt about that. Bo Nash has had a fair bit today too. Boy from Devonport. Stands out in those lime green boots. Centering kick, looking for Lockie Mitchell. Good spoil there coming from the side with Mitchell Green. But uh, they've got the back up, as they usually do, North Launceston through Nicholas. Now to Ives. Moves it on further here to Bailey Mitchell. Up from the twos today. Oh, handball puts Bales under pressure. Now Lockie Mitchell. Under attack here is going to be Avent straight away. Somehow gets a handball away to Chug. Great possession, footy North Launceston. Aganis, Cox Goodger, 20 out, kicks a goal. What a great passage of play there from North Launceston. They just kept possession, kept possession. It started at full back, really. Yeah. And they probably had about 25 possessions working yeah. their way up the, uh, the length of Utah Stadium. That was probably the passage of play for the day oh. for mine, Dave. Um, and with no disrespect to Glenorchy, it was a bit like a training drill in that it very, didn't hardly touch a Glenorchy yep. hand, did it? It was just all bombers, pressure, move it forward, pressure, move it forward, and Cox Good, you finished off a good work. Just that strength of some of the bombers players. We talk about pre-season, the, the value of weights training. When you see them break those tackles or get their hands free in a tackle to get that next position. Yeah, that's what uh, strong sides do, and uh, just really, really good work there, and hard work. Uh, players working hard, you know, we're we're 23 minutes gone in the last quarter and they're running like it's uh, the first quarter still. 16, 14, 110 to 7, 4, 46. So since half time, 12 goals to 5. And in this last quarter, it's uh, 5 goals to 1. So they've really got on top in the latter stage of this game. There's only a couple of goals of difference uh, midway through that third quarter. But as we've seen so many times, the fitness of North Lancaster to run out of game. Ball up. Aganis. Well run there by McInnes, who's battled hard all day, as is Rowbottom. He's tackled. Another stoppage. Exciting thing for me, Dave, out of both sides is their young players in terms of how they've acquitted themselves today. I mean, that's what you look at, isn't it? You want to see that development in your younger players. Little chip kick up here looking for a Hearn. On his hammer is Blake Waite. Ahern can't break the tackle. But he somehow once again got that handball away. It's a turnover there here through Kobe Phillips. Phillips has a man all by himself in Jordan Hayden. 25-minute mark, not long to go here at Utah Stadium. Hayden drives long, Blowfield in a one-out with Mitchell. Over the back with a big fist there with Bennett. Falls to Ives. Gee, they work well this North Launceston defence. Ends up with Simpson. Over the top to Bales. He's had a million kicks today. Shorts it up, looking for Cox Goodger. Overcooks the kick, though, on this occasion. Jeez, Cox Goodger, tough tackle there on Kobe Phillips. Ball spills out. Nash He's tackled by Hayden. Ball up. Short turnaround for the Pies, as we said. That uh, game against KG uh, against uh, the Tigers at KG5 on Anzac Day. Nice tap out from Aganis, but he gives it straight to his uh, opposite number there in Callum Thompson. Now Hayden, centering kick, looking for Manson. He meets Nicholas with a tackle. Oh, Bennett tackled from behind, holding the ball. Well done. Great second effort from Isaac Manson. He was out on his feet after the first contest, and he just laid that tackle as Bennett was trying to move away. He's kicked three today, one in each quarter, Rob. Yeah, absolutely. He's, um, he's been one of their best, that's for sure. He's, and he's, he's been involved in some others as well. I've really liked his game. Hear the crickets in the background. It's a beautiful autumn day here at Utah Stadium. Not a breath of wind. We've blessed with some good footy weather so far. 
through the first four rounds of the season. Here's Isaac Manson for goal number four in his game 100. He kicks it. No. One behind. 7-5-47. Plays 16-14. 110. Bales threads the eye of the needle to Cox Goodyear with a 40-metre pass. His 20-metre handball finds Nicholas. As the siren sounds here for the end of the game at Utah Stadium, a comprehensive win in the end after a real arm wrestle for two and a half quarters. North Launceston victorious, 16-14-110. Glenorchy 7-5-47. So a big second half for North Launceston. Seems them win here at Utah Stadium by some 63 points. Goal kickers, Rob. Uh, leading all comers on the ground, Dave. Kalen Matthews, the debutant, with five. Uh, three to Harvey Griffiths and three to Jack Ahern. Two to Declan Chug and singles to Blade Sulzberger, Oscar Van Dam and Brad Cox Goodger. For Glenorchy, uh, leading their goal scorers was Isaac Manson with three, Jordan Hayden with two, and singles to Matt Joseph and Brody Rowbottom. Comprehensive uh, win, as we said, to North Lonson. But uh, some real good signs from Glenorchy. I mean, they were smashed last week by Lauderdale. They had a great win over North Hobart. But against you know, one of the Premiership favourites, you know, uh, a really gutsy effort today from Glenorchy. Fell away late, as sometimes happens with younger teams against you know, more accomplished teams. But they can take a fair bit out of today's performance. Oh, absolutely. Like, to, to me, there's, you know, I, I'm not going to look at that margin. There's no, uh, there's no downside as far as uh, today, probably other than maybe... The Bombers got away from a bit in that last term, but it's to be expected. But um, I'm going to just very, very quickly, I'll go through best players shortly. But you know, I'll interrupt you, yeah, uh, Rob, if got, we get Caelan Matthews, but yeah, uh, keep going. Absolutely. Um, you know, I really like the game. Isaac Manson, Harrison Gunther, Brody Rowbottom, Jordan uh, Hayden, Adam Roberts, you know. And I, I've got the Glenorchy defence in there as well. I thought they worked really well. And as I said, if I was uh, a coach uh, that's going to be playing the Bombers, I'd be watching the video of today. We've got uh, the five-goal debutant down there, Caelan Matthews with Tony Webb. Take it away, Tony. Yeah, I have Caelan. Uh, Caelan, uh, your debut today. Uh, pretty good way to play the second half, especially four goals in the third, uh, one in the last. Got to be pretty pleased with that. Yeah. Yeah, I'm obviously pleased with it, but, um, yeah, I started off pretty slow, but I thought when I cracked in, I was going well, and I think we played well as a team as well, linked up through the middle, and, like, as we hit up the forwards as well, we were just hitting up real well, so I think we're just working well as a team as well, so... Yeah, I think Adrian would be very happy with that second half. At half time, he did ask for lift because you guys seemed to be a little bit flat, yeah. uh, and he asked for someone to come out and do something. Uh, it seemed like it was you, especially those early marks, uh, really fast on the lead as well. Yeah, yeah. Well, that was kind of my goal coming out at half time as well, just to like because I started slow. I just want to come out, be a spark, try and you know give us something to go on about. If that makes sense. Yeah, it certainly does. Look, congratulations on a great performance. Uh, the team will be very happy with that. Yeah. They'll no doubt see you up a little bit in a couple of minutes, but congratulations and uh, look forward to seeing the rest of your year. Thanks, mate. Appreciate it. Thanks. Back to you, Dave. He's uh, spoken like a like a 300-game veteran there, Dave. Yeah, he did well, young Kyle. You wouldn't expect the after-game interview. It's always uh, not, what, not an easy thing to do. So well done to the young man. Five goals today. And the big bird, I don't know if... Uh, Josh can get a bit of a vision there of Kalen coming back to his teammates because uh, a couple of them did the big bird thing there, but uh, <laughs> yeah, they're going to congratulate him on a, on a great debut. Five goals in the second half, four in the third quarter. And, and when you look at uh, it was a, when he, he produced that performance in the third quarter, the game was pretty much in the balance. Like, Lenorki were, were looking good. They were within two or three goals. And just that one individual performance really put the separation between the teams. Yeah, absolutely, Dave. And when, you know, with no disrespect to Carlin, it's his first game, but when you're the Glenorchy coach and you're putting the work into the opposition, I don't reckon they would have spent a lot of time talking about him. It's his first game. They would have looked at some other threats. Uh, but full credit to him, and I'll come to him in a moment when I go through the best players. But just finishing up there with Glenorchy. Sorry, yep. yep. Just finishing up there with Glenorchy. I, I had the Glenorchy defence because, again, I really like the way they... they, they, they just pick their way through, pick their way uh, out of uh, trouble. Uh, and again, as I said, I'm sure sides will have a little look at the tape and look at how they went about it. They were very composed, I thought, Dave, uh, in the way they went about it. For the Bombers, you know, I thought, again, it was a pretty good team effort, but there were some, some standouts. Um, I really liked uh, Harry Bales. I liked Lockie Mitchell back uh, back there. Alex Lee was terrific in the ruck. Um, 
up four. Jack Hearn was a, was a real threat. I think he kicked, uh, ended up with three. Brett Cox Goodger, I thought his last quarter was absolutely fantastic. Fletcher Bennett, as always, down back. Uh, you know, he always uh, frees himself up and sets things up. He was terrific. Uh, Kalen Matthews, we mentioned. Oscar Van Dam, I thought, was fantastic. I'm going to go through my three, two and one. But I thought it was a really good, even team effort. But those players I mentioned probably uh, shading their teammates. And a lot of North players picked up after halftime, didn't they? I think a few of them were down, a bit flat. Um, but, yeah, they had more contributors in that second half. And while you're thinking about your 3-2-1, we've got Dave Gruber's team stats. Uh, and you have a, a good think there, Rob. See if you can match up with uh, the, you know, the votes during the week. I know you have a look at the votes during the week that come out on the TV. Uh, killed me. Absolutely killed <laughs> me last week. <laughs> no, we'll, see if you, we'll see if you can get it spot on today. Here we go. Uh, Dave Gruber, team stats. North Launceston um, won the hitouts easily today, 52 to Glenorchy's 21. Um, clearances, North Launceston won that one too, 34 to Glenorchy's 22. Inside 50s, uh, dominant last quarter there by North Launceston when they just went away with things. Uh, 16 in that last quarter to give them 51 for the match and Glenorchy 26. Marks inside 50, 18 for North Launceston and 8 for Glenorchy. Intercept marks, Glenorchy 17, North Launceston 15, and free kicks were 19 for the Bombers and 23 for Glenorchy. Fantastic work as per usual groups, yeah. So a lot of those stats were evenish early in the day of Dave Gruber there, but uh, Gruber's, they got on top, didn't they? Look yeah, at that, that uh, inside 50s in that last quarter, 16 yeah. to 5. Uh, total dominance there. But, yeah, good signs for Glenorchy. A really good game of footy. Uh, we didn't come here with a lot of expectation today, uh, looking at the you know, position of the team in the ladder, but I, I thought it was a, a really good contested game of footy. And Glenorchy supporters, if you're still watching at the end of the stream, you can really be proud of what your team did. Yeah, absolutely. I think, um, you know, as I said, unfortunately, people look at the score in the paper or online and, you know, make judgments around what sort of game it was. You know, again, it was a really, really good game to watch. The Bombers got away from them late, as people would expect. Uh, but again, a really good game of footy and positives for both sides. I think Adrian Smith would be uh, very pleased with the way the Bombers lift their rating after half time. Glenorchy, some good signs as well. So, Last thing before you 3 2 1, Rob, the, the progressive scores Launceston 5 5 35, Lauderdale 4 2 26. And uh, at Lunston Arena, it's Clarence 7 7 49, the Tigers 4 10 34. And, uh, Rob, you're 3-2-1 today. Who'd you well, give it to? under pressure, given that obviously I do those before the votes come out on the television, David, I uh, know that whoever does that will be reading my mind. But I'm going to start with one vote to Kalen Matthews. I thought you probably couldn't, unless you kick six goals or seven goals, have a better debut. The thing that impressed me wasn't just the five goals, but it was the other stuff. You know, as I said, I talked about his defensive pressure, how he ran the position, how he, he worked really hard. I thought he was really, really good, Kalen, with his one vote. I gave two votes to Alex Lee, I thought, you know, again in groups of stats, dominant big man on the ground, just exerting his presence. I mean, you would expect that against a younger Ruckman, but, you know, you've still got to do the work. And, and Lee, for mine, is, uh, you know, in the top two big men in the competition. He, he was fantastic last week and missed out on the votes. Today, I thought his performance was terrific. And again, uh, in a tough one, uh, other players could have put their hands up. I gave three votes to Blake Sulzberger. I thought his uh, performance was fantastic. He played very well last week. Another level today. Very, very good out of the middle. Um, his run, his carry was Brilliant. fantastic. And he kicked a really good goal at the end. So uh, one vote, Kalen Matthews on debut there with his five goals. Two votes, Alex Lee with about 10 million hitouts. And three votes to Blade Salzberger with a mountain of possessions and a really good goal. Superb. Thank you, Robert Sauer. Pleasure to call the game with you today. It was, uh, yeah, a good fun. Especially in that second half, it really uh, opened up some really good footy players, some good highlights. No, it was. It was, a gr- it was, it was really good. I mean, uh, people here today would have enjoyed themselves. And as always, a pleasure, Dave, to call with you on the team. And the good news is we get to do it all again next week. Absolutely. North versus Clarence, and uh, it's going to be a really interesting game in the context of this season to see how those two heavyweights go. Thanks to you, Dave Gruber, on stats. Great work. Yep, no worries, Dave. Good see luck you for your week. Hawks tomorrow. Thank you. When do you oh, your Tigers got the bye, uh, uh, Rob. Which is fantastic. Hopefully we get 20 of them to come. Uh, we, I'm half expecting a call uh, from the coach with the injury list we've got. Thanks to Tony Webb on the boundary today. Thanks to Chris Ball in the studio uh, for getting us to air this afternoon uh, and also uh, getting the uh, interview with Damien Gill, which was a fascinating chat at halftime. Thanks to Damien as well uh, for giving up his time down there at Hewenville. That's all from us here at Utah Stadium. A really good game of footy. Final score here was North Monsterton 16-14, 110. Defeated Glenorchy 7-5, 47. Bye till next week.
This sports broadcast is brought to you by Elgas. For all your LPG needs, talk to the local...